and we are live what is going on everybody happy wednesday hope everybody is doing well let's see who's all here today uh man of the croc is here how's it going squirrels and pineapple pizzas gps is asking what's for lunch i don't know we had a we had a pretty big breakfast aaron made sausage eggs and uh like a uh, potato blend so i'm still still feeling pretty good i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure food talk will will come out at some point here uh, let's see, Jack's here, Meg is here, zombies in the house, no beds to level today, no beds to level, just, just today. <laughs> uh, Aaron's here, hey nice, uh, just received my new oscilloscope, nice! I have been very busy, um, you can't see all of this here, let me show you guys kind of what's going on over here. Um, but the huge Ikea order finally showed up, so I uh, built all these guys, these Alex drawers like we talked about, they're currently completely empty but as my plan is that every single one of these is going to be having um grinfinity uh organizers in all of them so all screws all small parts all the things will be hopefully nicely organized um and then i got the i got these guys back up on the wall I, we talked about this but the original plan was <clears throat> my original plan for the studio was to have three of these long ways um and then we were i think it was live on stream when i had the realization that the way that the slots work that is not going to work i i sort of um when i was figuring out how i wanted the layout of this place it was there was a lot going on let's just say that so i wasn't able to do three sideways but two stacked top down ended up working out well and then i'm starting on this side which is going to take quite a while as well um, but this side, which is like sort of set number two, uh, is getting three of these. So these are the Billy book shelves. Uh, Nappin, who was in chat, actually, I think he's here. I don't know if I saw him today. Um, he was the one that recommended these. Let me see if I can find it really quickly here. Um, do, 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 do. Bear with me. Uh, I clicked on the wrong thing. <clears throat> Do, do, do. Here it is. Okay, so this is what I need to print out and do conduits. So instead of doing rep racks, we are going to be getting these guys um, set up. So just so I don't have to put quite so many holes in the wall, and I think it looks a little nicer. Um, I'm still debating whether I'm going to add any kind of internal LEDs to sort of illuminate the inside of the... the um, so I can kind of remove... I don't know what that guy was saying. So you can sign up, light up the inside of the film, but we'll see. Either way, things are coming together and it's starting to feel like the studio is returning, which is which is so nice. It was just chaos having everything all over the ground, even for me. So that's what's going on here. Uh, you really screw them on the wall. Yes, they are all getting, um, they are all going into the wall. I've got, the, I mean, they come with these little bracket guys, but yeah, they're, they're really narrow and tall um, and they tilt very easily. Right now, Jack is never allowed up here or up here unless Aaron's holding him or I'm holding him. But yeah, once the um, once they're in their places, then I will drill them to the wall. The issue right now is that the cable, coaxial cable um, or the service line goes, it's right here and it's gonna be behind one of the Billy bookcases. So I have to position it in front of it and then drill a hole down below so I can thread that cable through it. So that'll be, Kind of the only, the only fun, <laughs> interesting element of the whole thing. But other than that, it should be pretty smooth sailing. But that's kind of what's going on here. Uh, let's see, where are the rest of your printer lineup? Down below, right underneath here in the garage is where a lot of the printers are. I've got one, two, three racks and a couple workbenches down there. So yeah, a lot of them, there's, there's, there's a lot of them down there. I, that's where most of them are. Up here is basically going to be the ones that I'm either actively using, testing, uh, or, yeah, or that aren't too heavy. Because, like, the VZBot is super heavy, um, and I, I can bring it up the stairs, but, like, it's a struggle. It's definitely a struggle. Um, let's see. Who else is all here today? Looking awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, I mean, ju just having, printing out the stuff for this again, because I, I decided to sort of change things up has been so nice having just like all of the the wow stick is now here with all of its little bits the ltt screwdriver the hodo like all the little tubs like it's it's so it's so nice for me when i'm working on a project 
like being able to turn and just see it, grab it, do the thing versus, you know, squirreling out of like, oh, what container is it and where is it? And then I'm like, what was I even doing? What am I looking for? So, <laughs> um, so this room is upstairs. Yeah, this is, this is completely separate. So this is upstairs. It's a, I don't know how long this room is, but it's long, very, very long enough for, I think it's twice the size, if not more than the previous studio. It's got a walk-in closet and a bathroom. And then downstairs is the garage. And that's, that's like laser CNC and then overflow of, of things. Uh, I'll do some testing of stuff down there, maybe even occasionally a stream, but this is the primary, primary studio up here. So, Hey Elizabeth afternoon. Looks like a workspace. Yes. Yes. I, I, I was smiling. I kept uh, t asking Aaron like every time I'd make some progress up here, can you come up and look? Can you come up and look? Like it's it's coming together. So uh, you need all the LEDs. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I just, if I'm gonna do LEDs in the, in the filament rack thing, I want it to look kind of like subtle and not super flashy. So we'll see. I gotta figure out how I can do it. I kind of don't want the LEDs to be pointing right at the camera. I almost want them to be facing towards the spools. So maybe if I create like a, a rat, like a, an adapter that's at 45 degrees. So that way it's just the light bouncing off the spools that makes it to the, I don't know. We'll see. It's, eh, we'll see. Uh, you still doing good infinity in the drawers. That is the plan. I plan on good infinity -ing, good, good infinity -ing, all of, all of the drawers for now. That's the plan right now. Nothing is inside of them because I only want things to go in there when they're ready. Also Tor, you asked a little bit ago if I ended up getting uh, a new label maker or a label maker. I did. I ordered, I ordered the P-Touch Cube Plus. P-Touch Cube, Cube Plus. And the thing I liked about that is I think you can use phone and computer to type up your labels, which is way quicker than hand typing them all on the little mesh buttons. Uh, on top of that, it auto cuts the labels and you can like just crank out labels. So I got that coming next week uh, with the intention of basically doing this. Are you getting those ESP32 LED boards from Shammy? I don't, I don't know that I've seen those Delmar. Uh, Shammy did ping me last, I think it was last week saying that he got some, uh, some new goodies in and I think he was going to send a few my way, but I didn't get specifics. So that sounds cool. Are they, are they primarily being used for printers or just sort of like any application? Because ESP32 LED board sounds like that could be cool for something like that. <laughs> You'll need uh, some screw finity too. <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if in the drawers I don't know if in the drawers it'll work. We'll see. I I, I just need to start printing out the grids as a very um, at the very least. So. Uh, KB3D, Chris, how's it going? Thank you very much for 16 months. So, yes, um, let me go ahead here. Let me get some sounds. Where are our sounds? Let's go. Hadouken. Um, any application, it's by Blam. Oh, sweet. Okay. Uh, I think to watch, I think to watch out for P-Touch. There is a lot of waste at the beginning and end of the printed labels if you use the auto cut. Gotcha. Okay. I know that even the manual, I don't know where my current label maker is at. It's also a brother P-Touch, but the older one that has like the full keyboard. It wasted a ton of, um, it wasted a ton of labels as well. So I think you have the option to either have it chop the whole thing or just do like a half cut on the back potentially. I'll, I'll play around with it. The goal is like minimize tabs and not waste a bunch of labels. So I think I just, I didn't buy any labels before. I'm just getting it with the two that it comes with. And um, I want to see if I can get it to work with the heat shrink tubing that I have. And then I'll order more, more, but yeah, I'll definitely play around with it to see what's going to create the least amount of waste because with how many labels I need to create, I definitely don't want to be wasting tons of materials. So today, today we are going to be building the stealth press and anyone that's not familiar with the stealth press, uh, I've got a few things to show you. So this is it. This is, this is what it looks like. Um, this is the unit itself, but let's go actually look at the product page or not the product page. Yeah, both, both the product page as well as the project page. So um, it's over on printables. It is an open source uh, heat set insert press. And there have been, there have been quite a few of these over the years I've seen. And I've always kind of been, I've had people in, I've had people in chat asking me for years, like, when are you going to make one of the, like some sort of press and I always said I don't know I'm so I, I'm so used to using just the hand tool and although that's true 
I, I also realize that that is not the case for everyone, and there are times where I probably could have benefited from having the heat insert going in a little bit straighter than my squirrely caffeinated hand can do. So, um, so we are going to be building one of these. This was made by Iconic Fab using, I believe it was sort of a lot of the pieces that was from Voron. So like your heat inserts, I think it's like M3, it's got the bomb, M3, where are you at? M38 socket heads, M525s. It uses a, uh, a key back, which is what the, the switch wire uses to keep the gantry from falling down. So it's a pretty sweet, um, it's a pretty sweet little uh, setup. It looks really great too. It has a lot of printed parts, which I like. Like the main, it's mainly all printed with the exception of like your bolts, your nuts, your couple bearings and the key back. So um, it is going to be, it's gonna be fun. Hey Fabrico, how's it going? Uh, I felt the same, but honestly have fallen in love with mine since the build. Yeah, we need, we, <laughs> builds aren't stopping and we're only doing more and more things. I think the, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think the, uh, I think the ERCF has quite a few of them. I know I've got a couple other builds lined up, so we need them and we need to use heat inserts and just having this is going to be nice. I'm having, um, this was, the kit was sent over kindly by KB3D. So we've got, uh, again, like the full kit, which has all the hardware inside here, linear rail, all of your bolts, your heat inserts, your bearings, your, I think I said linear rail, if not, that's in here, the key back. Um, also, they were kind enough to send over the TS-101. One of my biggest, like, c uh, potential concerns about building one was that I was going to be tying my primary soldering iron to it, which is the pine sole. And I was just like, ah, I don't know how much I'm gonna like swapping back and forth between installing it here and not. So the TS-101 is gonna stay full-time, or yeah, full-time inside of the stealth press, which is, which is really nice. Um, and then also I've got from KB3D the CNC kitchen heat insert tool or heat insert soldering tip, which is pretty freaking sweet. So this is the, uh, basically, I mean, it works also for Pine Soul. Pine Soul uses the same adapters, but instead of using this little needle tip, like I normally do, you've got a tip that's got a thread on the end of it. And then you've got all of the different little brass um, heat insert tips that will thread onto here. So for whatever your specific size is, which is pretty sweet. The primary one we use is, um, the primary ones that we are going to probably use is the M3, but I, I believe, let me see, oop, let's see. Yes, they're all nicely, I don't know, let's see if we can focus in on this maybe. They're all nicely labeled so you can easily see which one you need versus trying to guess because I would screw that up. But um, I'm not sure. I think the the Milo, which we're hopefully gonna be building here pretty soon, um, uses slightly larger heat inserts on certain parts. I don't quote me on it, but I think I saw that. So it'll be nice having an array of uh, different tips to choose from. But yeah, so there we've got like the M3 one and they're, the TS-101 and the Pine Cell use the exact same type of uh, iron tips. I, I don't, I mean, I don't, it's technically not a tip. It's like the full heating element and everything inside here, but whatever we call them. So pretty sweet. Um, that's exactly how mine is set up. Yeah. It's just super nice. I have one of the CNC heat inserts works great. I've been wanting to get one of these forever. And again, it was just a matter of like, I'm, I was, I'm fine with using the needle nose when I'm doing it by hand. Uh, but having it in the press, I'm like, yeah, having a dedicated set of tools for it is going to be super sweet. Hey Liz, good afternoon. How was your how was your birthday last week? Now, I'm interested to see what you change in the next generation. Maybe you require folks to print it in a fun color. <laughs> um, Stealth press bomb consists exclusively of Voron bomb parts. All parts listed you can actually find in the switchwire and uh, and your switchwire. Oh, cool, nice. That's awesome. Iconic Fam has been in a lot of streams lately. I bet he popped in. Oh yeah, he's here. <laughs> so also in other exciting news. So um, today's stream is probably gonna be a little bit shorter than normal. I don't think this will take as long as some of the builds and stuff that we've done. Although don't put it past me to find a way to stretch it out. Uh, but which is which works out for me. I'm actually trying to finish Saturday's video this week because I have had so much extracurricular squirrel activities. I haven't finalized Saturday's video. so. Um, but I did want to say that KB3D and Iconic 
Fab are providing a stealth press kit as well as for our giveaway. So we'll do our giveaway. I'll open it in an hour and 15 minutes. So everyone will enter in and then we will do two drawings. We'll do, I think our usual drawing for, yeah, we'll do our usual drawing for a spool of polymaker filament and then we'll do uh, a secondary drawing, which will be for a stealth press kit. So definitely hang around for that. If you've been interested in one, that could be a very cool way to get one. So thank you uh, to KB3D and Iconic Fab for doing that, because that's super freaking cool. Um, my birthday was fun, still processing giveaways. Oh man, yeah, e every time I've done, and I've only done a handful of big milestone events or like celebratory, I think it was one year. I think we did one year, 1,000 subs and 100,000 subs. And 100,000 subs was by far like the biggest one. And oh my gosh, like logistically, the, the pre and post uh, of that stream, it, it rolled on for weeks and weeks of like trying to trying to figure out everything. So it was it was nuts. I <laughs> hopefully you get it all figured out. Uh, XR Bunker, thank you very much for the 10 memberships. Cheers. I was actually uh, we were just talking about one of the, where's the call? Let's get some sound effects here. Let's do, do your horn. Thank you, thank you. Um, hey, Ballistic, we were just talking about, or Delmar mentioned your ESP32 LED controller. I messaged you back on Discord. Um, I don't know if the ESP32 controller is something that you were planning on sending over, but I was just talking about, I'm building a, sh um, a three shelf, filament rack thing so it's basically rep rack but inside I'm going to show a photo why, why why am I this is what I'm this is what I'm building um, but it's gonna be three of them side by side and I'm debating on running LEDs so if you have an LED controller that might make sense to install uh, so I can I mean turn on off or maybe do some stuff with colors if it's RGB controllable that could be pretty freaking cool when are you gonna do celebrity house warming stream <laughs> I don't I don't know uh, you did. I totally can send one. Off. Yeah, it'd be awesome. I at least want to check it out. I was debating doing LEDs. Um, I don't, I'm definitely not, I want it to be subtle. So I'm still, I'm looking online on inspiration for people that have done like backlit cabinets and stuff to figure out how I, how I potentially want it. But I think that, uh, since Domar mentioned it and I was talking about LEDs, that could be cool to at least take a look at. Post the link. And, okay. Let me take a look at this really quick and then we'll get started and then we will get started before before I get too, too far down the, uh, let's see, live streams. Here we go. You know what? I think somebody, I feel like somebody had shown this to me. Uh, black NeoPixel hub by Blam. This is a NeoPixel RGB hub that was designed by Blam, the creator of Daylight on a Stick and Disco State. A part of the sale will be featured the creator. Okay, sick. So this lets you plug in up to three. Is there any... Is there any limitation to length of LEDs? Cause like it's gonna, it would probably be a fair amount and it wouldn't be daily on the sticks. It'd be like, I would imagine your typical, I, I've got a bunch of them somewhere, like your rolls of RGB LEDs. Um, I'm thinking as long as I have a big enough power supply that I can feed into it, it's probably gonna be fine up to four different to four different strings of LEDs if you want. It all runs off of the ESP32. Interesting. Yeah, that that could be. What is the what does it look like on the controller side of it? Uh, is there is there a code for? Let me see. Neil, help me really quick. I I don't want to get too <laughs> too far off, but uh, dev kit hub. Yeah, I'm curious to see what it looks like on the control side. Like if there is a if there's a UI of sorts to toggle on and off, or is it just through Clipper? I'm, I'm sort of interested, but that, that looks awesome. That looks super cool and compact and probably perfect actually. <clears throat> okay, so let's, let's get into this. Let's first take a look at all of the parts that I printed out. I've also got uh, a link in the description for anyone interested in checking it out more over to KB3D's uh, website. I, oh, sick, okay. I was just gonna say when I when I set up the stream, it looked like they showed out of stock, but it looks like they're back in stock. Do you, do you have them available, uh, Chris, right now? That's what I was actually gonna mention. Was I hope that you have them. Uh, WLED has a UI. Oh, sick. Okay, browser web UI. You can run them from Clipper now too. Okay, 
So WLED is typically ran off of, it's an ESP32 sort of interface for RGB or LEDs in general. LEDs and native apps, thick. That's super cool. Uh, it would have a limit to the length based on being five volts, wouldn't it? Like the normal brightness drop off you have. Yeah, it's five volts. Still, I'm thinking about it. I think a lot of the ones I ever told were 24. I'll, I'll look into it a little bit more. Um, we ran out of keybacks for a couple of days. Okay, sweet. You've got them now, though. Hey, RH3D. Happy Wednesday. You can do thousands of effects with it. Okay, I'm excited. And Clipper's a plugin that makes it super easy now, too. Fun. Okay. Yeah, I'll just have to figure out again if the five volts, I'll have to do some measurements and see if the math adds up. Cause I, I, uh, with what Elizabeth's saying, that's sort of was my question as well. If it's running off of five volts, how many, how distance can I get? Because I would want, it's three, it's three entire bookshelves. So we'll figure it out. <clears throat> uh, there's a limit, but you can do power injections or use 12 volts. 12 volts would probably be, uh, better in this situation. Okay. Quickly <laughs> before I do that, let's look at the printed parts. So. It's a hodgepodge of printed parts. I, uh, for the base, for the top, for a lot of the pieces actually, I guess all of them that are in this sort of silvery gray color, these are all the PET um, A-Force glass fiber from Fetus. So pretty awesome, high temp, uh, super rigid PET for these. Then for the base, we went with, uh, do one, one per shelf. Yeah, that's probably a good idea then. Um, the, for the base, this is uh, also PET, but it's PET carbon. Is this PET? Did I deal with PET carbon fiber for this? I'm near positive this is PET carbon fiber. It's the same. Uh, it's the same Fetus A Force stuff, but it's the uh, carbon fiber variant of well as well. Um, so this is pretty sweet. This was actually on a printer that a new printer I've been testing out, and I. The Z offset was slightly off, so I'm really hoping, uh, and the and the actual, um, it's on the bottom, so I was like, ah, it's okay. The the flow rate was a little bit too high, so I'm hoping I can get this piece to pop out, because I think this is a part that's gonna come off, so we'll see how that goes. But yeah, so we've got uh, PET glass, PET carbon, and then the couple of parts that were recommended in uh, for higher temp, I think it was this piece, which is the holder, the iron holder, as well as, Maybe these pieces weren't, maybe it was just, I don't know. These are these are um, carbon ABS. I think all the parts are gonna be fine regardless. These are all pretty high temp stuff, um, but it should look pretty with the black and the and the silver gray. Uh, do one for shelf, true power injection makes sense. I guess you only need it to do the control. Power injection would be what basically bypassing by like so not doing power through the esp32 module and just using it for signal <clears throat> okay so now let's take a look at everything that comes inside of the kit let me know again if, if uh hopefully sound and everything's okay we also i swapped out we have the same isp but i i swapped out the um router for a different one so hopefully everything's it, it should be it should be a better router but just in case uh power at the start and middle length of a strip gotcha okay okay so this is the key back And our bearings. So these are. This should all look familiar to anyone that's built a boron. This should all uh, all look familiar. And if you've built a switch wire, then this looks real familiar. <clears throat> yeah, smash the like button <laughs> if you haven't. We're doing we're doing a, a giveaway of one of these two in filaments. Definitely smack the like button. This is why. Oh, that's right. I have to. I probably have to take this part off. I don't know. I'm not going to mess with this now, but so this is the key back. This is what's going to keep it from smashing downwards when you let go of it. So exact same setup as what's used on the switch wire. <clears throat> the 
this is a pretty this is a pretty um <laughs> pretty packaging as well it's really nice bubble mailer all right and this is likely gonna be oh snap do i i hope i have i'm sure i have all of it i didn't realize though that it doesn't include it doesn't include the little um the heat inserts and stuff uh, let me open it with this. At least it doesn't look like it does. I'm sure I have it. I just, I'm gonna have to figure out on some of the uh, socket heads where they are. Okay, sweet. We got a KB3D rail. Ooh, this feels... It's a nice rail. <laughs> this is a nice rail. Awesome, so we've got that. Okay, so the kit comes with basically the, I think you can get, I think you can get the, um, I'm pretty sure you can, yeah, so you can get a fastener kit if you need it. So the fastener kit is an option as an add-on. So this is what I've got, the self-press kit for heat inserts, which has the bearings, the key back and the rail. So basically sort of the things that you might not have spares of. And then if you need the, fastener kit you can get that for it looks like 879 and that comes with the heat inserts and the screws so it looks like it's primarily m38 so let me let me really quickly here see if i've got we probably have some spare right here actually from the trident build let's see i think you said you've got hardware. i probably did <laughs> i probably i probably did say i had hardware covered uh this was also sent before we moved and I had, um, had my life a little bit more together before everything ended up in boxes. So let me see, I'm sure I've got it somewhere here. Uh, these look like a little bit longer. There's gotta be these look like M38s. Let's check. <laughs> Just got here, but got an email before I even turned the stream on saying I've been gifted a membership. Oh, sick. Yeah, that was that was from XR. Thank you very much, XR. Yeah, these are M38. So this hopefully is enough. I think it is. This is, looks like 25 or so. Heat inserts, we've got checks. The last thing is going to be, um, I think they're M, what was it? 25s. They are... <clears throat> M525s. That uh, that one I'm hoping we do have extras of. M530s. You know what I have? Are they socket heads? Uh, socket head M5. I've got, give me, bear with me here. Bear with me here. I think I know where I've got a tub of some like odds and ends <clears throat> screws that I've purchased recently here. Yeah, this is it. M5, let's see if we've got it in here. If not, we'll improvise. I've got it somewhere. It's a matter of, uh, oh, M, M525s, hold on. M5, how many M5, how many do we need of these M5, 25, I'll check the bottom really quick. I think this is it. Boom, okay. So we got M5, these are not, uh, these are not socket heads. Hopefully that's okay, these are button heads. Let's really quickly check the, let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay, we only need two of them. Uh, hopefully, hopefully this is okay. I'm gonna put the button heads for now out of here so that we've at least got something. Um, grab a bunch of M38 socket heads and a bunch of Voron spec heat insert in, uh, in your set, full bomb. Count. Okay, yeah, I've got the heat inserts. I've got the, the M3 by eight socket heads, just the M525s. I have those as well. They're just not socket heads, so I don't know if that's gonna be an issue. Hopefully not. I think we might just have to roll forward with that because I don't know, I don't know what M5 hardware is right now. I think button heads are fine. Yeah, we'll just go with that. It's the benefit of having just that, the, your previous two Voron build hardware organizers at your feet. Okay, you go back down there. Perfect. Okie dokie. So, Let's take a look at the guide because the guide is gorgeous. Uh, this is, I, I, I very much so have grown to appreciate, the more things I built, I've grown to appreciate a good guide. Um, 
the amount of times I've built things and the guide's been incomplete or not a good guide or non-existent is, is many. So having a step-by-step -step guide is something that I, I appreciate. So we got Stealth Press assembly manual with a pretty render. Um, Stealth Press is open source heat insert based design and created by Marius Skuja. Uh, project is designed with easiness to source and build in mind. It's mostly 3D printed. However, it uses multiple high quality precision parts, which you need to source separately before building. Uh, motivation, there are multiple projects like this available for, for free download and build. Almost all of them rely on Masumi. Yeah, almost all the ones I've seen are extrusion based. Um, to provide precision, uh, Stealth Press relies on a MGN 12H linear rail instead, which provides a stable spine to build every component around. Integrated printable build plate adds another critical element for precision and easiness to work with. And the Stealth Press uses the key back proven to last more than 1 million pulls. That, that is a lot of printer builds. <laughs> that, is, that is a lot of printer builds. So I think we're good with that. Uh, has some other quirks featuring features and quality of life improvements compared to similar projects. So we've got the license. This is a GNU uh, GPL V3. <clears throat> Have you tried the label printer yet? Tolly, how's it going? Thank you for nine months. We actually just talked about, I, uh, I got a new label printer coming. I got the brother P-Touch uh, Cube Plus coming. I, <laughs> I, I've got so many labels to print out that I need to be able to use like a phone or, or a computer to sort of export and just mass print out things versus manually typing one by one. Like there's hundreds and hundreds of little things I need to make. So I have not. I. <laughs> I need to, maybe we'll do a hangout stream and I'll test it on stream for you, Kali. Uh, I'm going to need to see uh, proof of that test. One, two, I, you know, I'll have to take their word for it. Okay. So let's see, we've got the added license. We've got print settings, which <clears throat> print settings are the same as Voron spec. So FDM, ASA, ASA carbon fiber, ABS, ABS plus, or ABS carbon fiber. I didn't stick with that because I think the main things are rigidity and, um, well, really rigidity, but also for temp related, I don't know if I would do this in PLA. I, because of the stuff, the stuff I used as a PET that's on the more high temp side of things, I am confident we'll, we won't have any issues, but uh, I, I wouldn't use PLA. So the recommendation, if we're going based off of what the instructions say, is some variation of ASA or ABS. <clears throat> Uh, peeling the backup labels is the worst. <laughs> I've gotten pretty good at it, but yeah, I can, uh, uh, yeah, I can, I'm sure doing these, doing these gridfinities is going to test my squirrely patience. I, I, if I'm not in real, like, major focus mode, I will probably do five of them and then go do another task and then do five of them. I can't sit still for that long. I just, I just can't. Yeah, repetitive, re repetitive, the same task over and over again. I, I, my, my mind like is, oh, it, it <laughs> so yeah, I can, I can relate to that. <clears throat> as far as print settings, it's again, uh, Voron spec. So 0.2 layer height, 0.4 forced extrusion width. You've got a few different options for infill. I think I did grid 40%, um, 40% <clears throat> infill percentage, four walls and five top and bottom layers. It does say here that you can use cubic infill with as little as 25% infill. Um, and then also PLA, oh, PLA and PTT are also considered as a, or considerable as a filament choice. However, taking into account the soldering iron radiates some indirect heat usage of less temperature stable filaments may result. Okay. So maybe you can get away with PLA again. I know, I think it was Tor that just mentioned it, but like in reality, you're in an open environment when you're using it and the heat coming off of it, maybe, maybe will rise up to the handle that's actually touching it, but it shouldn't be substantial, I wouldn't think. <clears throat> uh, Brother label tapes have split back for easy peel. Yes, yes they do. <laughs> yes they do. Yeah, uh, the split. <clears throat> Man, my throat is <clears throat> is uh, like attacking me right now. The split back ones make it so much nicer to just bend and peel it off. Versus if you don't have that, trying to fish it off the corner is super frustrating. I know that when I was. When I was living with my buddy, his wife did a bunch of stuff with the vinyl cutter, and I think that she used two pieces of tape to help with that. So you'd slap one on the back, one on the front, and that would help peel them apart, which was which worked pretty well. 
<clears throat> uh, hey, Jermaine. Hey, Steve's here. 22 months. How's it going? Happy Wednesday. Uh, let's do squirrel for Steve. <laughs> if you want a big LED project controller, the Quinn LED, the Quinn <clears throat> LED options are very good. I don't know what that is. If you want to send me, if you, if you're in the discord and you want to send a link to that, I'll absolutely take a look at it as well. The LEDs, I got to think about how I'm going to, I'm going to have to drill some holes between, between these cabinets, uh, or not cabinets, they're, they're the bookshelves to figure out how to route the wires between them. So I got to play around with that a bit. Uh, is the ender wire completed yet? Yes and no. So it's functional. It's fully functional. Um, I printed out the the adapter for the the 40 40 extrusion, like the exposed aluminum. Somebody sent me the correct one. I think it was in Discord. So thank you to whoever that was. They printed it out. It fit like a glove. Um, I printed out recently the. Um, <clears throat> um, I don't see it right now. Oh, yeah. I'm playing around with different. <clears throat> mounts for the E3 EZ board. Uh, you can't see this because I'm not on the right thing. Let's go really quickly here. Uh, playing around with different mounts. So I don't know that this one's going to work. I'm going to try this one and one other one that I found. And if not, I'm just going to model up a basic bracket that uses four heat inserts for the um, <clears throat> for the board through hole screws. And then we'll just use some VHB tape. But <clears throat> wow, <clears throat> I might need to get something for my throat. We'll see. Um, the only things that are really lacked, like it's, it's again, operational, is tuning um, and cleaning up wires a bit. And yeah, it's, I ran a small print on it and it works fine. So everything is, everything is operational. <clears throat> I still, I haven't had great performance with the inductive probe on there. So I'm debating swapping it for the one from the Trident build I never used. And if performance is the same, I'm likely going to leave it in there until uh until the eddy from victory tech full launches and then i think i'll swap that out into there so that way i've got a better probe option i'm just not a huge fan of inductive probes i i've used them here and there like the rat rig v minion has like a pinda style i don't think it's super pinned i think it's just pinda style and that's actually worked fantastic for me but i just haven't had luck with these <clears throat> i think they're omron uh branded ones that is in the boron Bomb. Steve also had mentioned to me that it's it's possible that uh, they could be clones, the ones that are included in these kits. So I don't know, like I haven't ordered one specifically from a authorized reseller. So I don't know whether what I'm getting is OEM or not, but I haven't had great luck with them. PF, thank you very much for the 10 members, man. You guys are awesome. Uh, let's do, what do we got for, let's do, we'll do a stand, eight. we'll do a clap stand. Thank you very much, PF. <clears throat> How's the soundproofing? How's the soundproofing? In, I think I missed it. In this room? Oh, this room while you're in another room. Uh, the soundproofing, so this room is a little more echoey. It's just, I mean, I think it's just that there's more space in here. And so there's more, more distance for my voice to sort of travel and bounce off things. Also, there's a bathroom, like I'm looking at the mirror of a bathroom, looking at like, I can see myself, which is weird. I usually close that door. I, and my desk is right there. So when I record audio on the microphone, it's a little bit, the acoustics aren't as great. So usually I'll shut that, I'll shut the closet and it's it's good enough. I, I could I could probably use some sound dampening foam, um, which maybe I'll look into at some point, but I, I don't think it's, I think it's pretty good. So I uh, posted a link in the stream Discord. Awesome, thank you very much. Does it sound, does it sound pretty echoey compared to what you guys are used to? That's a bummer. I. Yeah, I'll have to play around with that. I, I don't think I, I think I'll wait until I have all the things in here that are gonna be in here. Like once maybe the filament racks and stuff are in here and I've got more stuff, it might help. Uh, it will get better as you add shelves and stuff. Yeah, so I, I don't think I'll do any sort of sound treatment until I've got all of the things in place like that I want in here. And then at that point, if we're like, yeah, it still has some room for improvement, then maybe I'll look into getting some foam panels and stuff like that. I don't hear, okay, cool. Yeah, I don't think it's that bad. I. I recorded some footage uh, for Lightburn at the old place and I recorded some footage here and I had to splice them together and I definitely heard some slight difference, but that was with me being right next to the bathroom and that, you know, go into the bathroom and record audio. It doesn't sound good. So as long as that door is closed, it's usually decent, the acoustics. So, okay, let's, before I squirreled, before I squirreled hard into other things, let's get back into this. <clears throat> So naming is naming as far as printing is the exact same as Voron as well. So you have your primary parts you have with an A for your accent parts. 
And then you've also got the quantity of things. I think there was only one thing that required uh, more than one quantity. I believe it was just like the little washers or shims. So everything else I think was just singular, <clears throat> uh, single part printing. So nothing too crazy. That was a proper, yeah, that was the very squirrel. Okay, awesome, thank you. You should make some sound dampening ceiling boards to go along with track system for cameras. Sound is fine, but nice. yeah, I, I still need to look into that more, uh, Lisa. I haven't, the reason why we don't have an overhead camera is I haven't had much time to think about sort of a rail system since we had the discussion a month ago. I, all this stuff came in, I'm like, okay, let's get the basics and then we'll put like the shiny bells and whistles on things like the oohs and ahs. But for now I'm like, I need functional. Functional, <clears throat> functional first and then pretty and cool will, will come second, which is hard, e easier said than done. <clears throat> Uh, so this is saying that you can basically, you don't have to stick with the color. I did, I think I did. Mm, no, I think for the bed, I didn't stick with it being a primary. I went with accent. So it's basically saying go crazy and do the colors that you want. Okay, so let's get into the assembly, which is going to be, I think, mostly a lot of heat inserts, which this will be one of the last times I've, uh, one of the last times we use this pine sulfur for hand, hand installing. I'm sure I'll occasionally do some by hand, but I'm going to try for the next few builds to lean on the stealth press as much as I possibly can. So it looks like we've got insert there, insert there for the linear rail, and then one on the back. These are made of brass. Um, as the plastic cools, uh, it solidifies uh, resistance. M3 insert. Okay. And they, it needs to be Voron spec, which should, these all should be Voron spec. They are from a Voron kit. <clears throat> Let's see. Heat inserts. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, usually that's really funny because usually I'm like, I'm going to skip the heat insert parts of the build, but this is this is the exception, not the rule. <laughs> it's a heat insert tool. There must there must be heat insert. Uh, ins there must be heat insertion happening. <clears throat> so I think for the ones that I can, well, it's really going to be this one only that I will um, I was gonna say I'll turn it around and press it into the quartz, but I, I don't know if I will. Let's just get this. How's everybody's week going? <laughs> How's everybody doing? I know, what, what projects is everyone working on? I don't think Luke's here, but I know that he's been working on ERCF stuff. Uh, I know Aaron rebuilt his Trident, um, and is working on a K3. What's everybody else up to? Wow, this takes, this takes longer. I'm actually going to press it down. That takes longer than I'm used to. <clears throat> Again, this is the PET glass fiber stuff from Fetus. Ooh, it went in there clean though. It looks, it looks really good. Sir, didn't you get a new heat set tool? I did, but I want to save it. I want to use that for, for the, for the main event. <clears throat> Should I use it? I can, okay, all right, let's, we'll, we'll test drive, let me unplug the pine sole. Let's unplug, let's, we'll test, <laughs> we'll test drive the tool, okay? I was gonna save this for its its maiden, maiden flight was gonna be with the self press, but all right, all right, all right. <laughs> well, let's, let's really quickly, we can tear open the box, it's fine. Hey, Viking. Uh, legit, I actually think vibing while someone does heat answers is actually chill. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> All right. So we have got, it's super similar to the pine sole. Um, I guess I kind of knew that because everyone was giving me, everyone was giving me sort of, um, when I asked which one I should get, it was a split between pine sole and the TS-101. Uh, not sure who gave to the memberships. It was either PF or XR Bunker. I, I'm not sure which one, but um, uh, DFH also sells black heat inserts. I've never used them. That I that is pretty cool though to have black inserts. Ooh, that's a that's a tight fit. That's that makes me think I need to loosen or tighten up my screw. There's a little adjustment screw, and I'm assuming that's the exact same thing on this guy. That basically is what latches onto these when you when you install them, and that has a really nice snap versus versus what I'm used to. Pine sole is cheap. Yeah, pine sole was cheaper. <clears throat> pine sole was cheaper. I don't think by a whole lot. 
I don't know why my, <clears throat> my throat is on the fritz. Okay, so it says heating. <clears throat> okay, it's not heating. Let's. Uh, it says it's heating, but I don't see. Let's press A. Okay, we're at two. Okay, we're at three hundred. That seems slightly aggressive. Uh, what's this guy do? Work temp. Okay, here we go. Let's do like two. It said two fifty, but. I'm pretty sure I go warmer than that on the pine sole. And this is this is sort of higher, we'll do 280. We'll see how that goes. <clears throat> that heats up really quick, just like the pine sole. So yeah, I think they're, I don't really know what, like why you'd get one over the other, other than, I mean, the, again, the, the thing I got with the pine sole is like, cool, it's less expensive. And it had an open source firmware that ran on it, which I thought was kind of neat. Careful of your finger. Yes, thank you. <laughs> oh, tip is smoking, is it? Okay. Let's try to let's try to avoid burning ourselves today. I hear Jackson yelling. <laughs> what is he saying? We didn't end up getting to go to the zoo for his birthday on Sunday, which was kind of a bummer. The um <clears throat> the time change screwed us up. We didn't realize we didn't realize there was a time change until we were in the heat of it and we were only gonna have three hours at the zoo uh, because Aaron had to work on Sunday night. And so, <clears throat> one second. Yeah, I think I could probably go 300 with this. Uh... Yeah, it's, it's actually struggling to push in. Let's go, let's raise this up really quick here. Holy crap, it goes even, it goes way hotter. Okay, hold on. Backlight, temp unit, display unit, boost temp, power temp, mini volt, low current. Okay. I don't know how to adjust settings on this. Let me see. Okay, here we go, let's see. Nope. How do you navigate this? Here we go. Okay, I'm going up to 300. Um, but yeah, we didn't. We weren't able to go to the zoo because the time changed and his naps. It was like we were going to have an hour and a half at the zoo, and it was going to be too stressful, and the weather was kind of crap. So we ended up just going to a park, um, which he'd actually never been to a park, and it was his first time on the swings, and, and we took him down the slide as well, and he had a freaking blast. We're still going to go to the zoo. It's it's definitely on the the agenda, we just needed to wait for better weather. One of the benefits of using self press, heat insert press, is that you just drop inserts in uh, and it positions them in holes easily, nice. How far we've come, you used to just plug in a soldering iron and use it, now soldering irons have their own firmware. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I don't have any intention to play around with the firmware on pine sole. Wait, are, this, are these supposed to go below surface? Um, I just want to make sure I'm not forcing it into a pocket that's not deep enough for it. No, it, it looks like it can go below surface. I think, again, I think that this this class PET, I, I think I printed it to 290. There we go. It prints at like 290. Uh, and so I think it's just... It's real heat resistant. So yeah, if you're if you're using, well, I mean, I don't think most people are going to be using this material for this particular build per se, but if you are, I would I would go with 300 C. I feel like I should use something like maybe like one, two, three blocks to sort of smash it down. Go a hair further. ABS is probably much easier to use for this. 
with a me oh, metal ruler is what Steve uses? That is a good idea. I was, yeah. Steve's got all the tricks. Yeah, so we'll get you nice and warm again, and then we will press you down. Yeah, I like having a flat surface to press against after as well. Normally, if it's on the bottom side, I would just, um, I would just flip it around. <laughs> I need to, yeah, I need a stealth press for my stealth press. <laughs> <clears throat> This is the first time I've ever used a heat insert um, into this material. And boy, is it, resi is it resistant to, to heat. <clears throat> yeah, one, two, three block. I guess the only issue with the one, two, three block is I have to make sure that where I'm pressing isn't a hole. <laughs> with the ruler, with the ruler, I know it's flat. <clears throat> okay, so we got two more up here. I will say it is nice to do a few of these sort of like in between, in between streams, um, between builds that are sort of not as, not as detailed or as involved as a full printer build. <clears throat> it's a nice kind of, a little, little chiller. It's heat resistance is why you picked it. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. That is why I picked it. When I, when I was testing out the material for the video, I was like, oh, this seems like a perfect material for this. <clears throat> and we're in. And we push it in. Hey, there's Luke. How's the, how's the ERCF uh, happy hair tuning going? Okay, what did I miss? Uh, is that first heat insert sitting a little proud? I don't, I don't think so anymore. I think you were talking about the one that I just uh, pushed in a little bit further. It, it was initially, but we should be good to go. We should be good to go now. Let me uh, set that down there and really quickly turn off autofocus. Okay, so we've got these four and then one in each end here. And then one on the back, and that should be everything from the first page. And material uh, GPs, you asked, this is um, from Fadis, and it is their A4 series, and it is a PET, not PETG, glass fiber. I did a full video on it. It's really heat resistant. Uh, heat, res heat resistant. Uh, it has some pretty cool properties. I usually go 280 to 300. Okay, yeah. I don't know what the pine cell set up, but that's worked pretty well. I should probably just reference that. Hey, Jose, happy Wednesday. Welcome. Uh, your is, is on hold. The Triangle Lab supplied thinking code. Oh no, got new ones on order from Fabrica. Okay, cool. So you got, gotcha. I'm looking forward to hearing sort of your thoughts on that. Um, I mean, again, that's still majorly the game plan is to build one. So <clears throat> curious to see once you get it kind of up and running what your, what your opinion is. <clears throat> okay, so page one done. Page two, we've got the top portion. <clears throat> it looks like this one's got one, two, three, four, five, six there. Two on one side and then two on the other side. And so, yeah, so uh, does one go on the back as well or no? Insert on the other side. I think one probably goes in the <clears throat> it looks like it based off its location. So, add heat the center parts, inserts here. Yeah, so I think for this one, basically everything is getting an insert. So it looks like all these guys, two on this side, two on this side, and then it looks like one here as well. So, hopefully I'm not wrong, but it, they all look like they're pocketed out that way. So, let's line them up. <clears throat> I also ordered a couple Savix servos. To, are they are they just more powerful, beefier servos, or what's what was the reason for swapping your servos? Ah, these are. There we go. Note: If you're using an MGN12, kicking around that is 
There's mods on printables to build a stealth press in those heights as well. Oh, cool. You get a big old, a big old stealth press. Yep, one goes in the back as well. I think that is missing for the manual. Okay, sweet. I figured as much. It kind of the the usually the little pockets for the heat inserts all look kind of similar. So. Ah! Drop the nut. I've been pretty good. Knock on, knock on what I've been pretty good about not dropping hardware on the floor here. Okay. Yeah, I like having this press because I see that the perimeter slightly wants to deform from the heat. Um, I don't really know why on this particular, I, I think it's again, this particular filament, um, but the, uh, the ruler helps push it back in place before it cools. Oops, uh, there we go. Uh, Starbucks, the recommended of MGN are cheaper. Okay, gotcha. Did you did you self source your your kit or? I'm sorry. Did you say yeah? Did you self source parts for it, <clears throat> Luke, or did <clears throat> did you find a kit? I think that's good enough. Uh, Man of the Crack, thank you for the $5. Any good guides for tuning a V0? Now some randomness. Whale pilot. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I got distracted. Oh my god. All right, we're fine. We're fine. Everything's good here. <laughs> oh my. I, that insert went just a hair bit further in. Thanks for that. <laughs> of course, though, when I'm looking away, it seems like it goes, it goes quicker. I'm going to put a little more push on this one. I see it. This one's sticking out a little bit more. Mm. Maybe it's just the angle. I think it, once the linear rail is on, I don't think it's going to matter, but it just slightly off. Uh, any guides for tuning a V0? I mean, I would say similar to any printer, really. The LS tuning guide has is a really solid resource that covers a broad, broad range of things that you'll want to tune. Um, but I mean, the main things I would say are uh, it's not a bad idea to tune your rotation distance on your extruder, even if the even if there was one in the config, still get it in case there's some off. Um, getting it close isn't a bad idea. Um, then obviously, like your input shaping, your pressure advance. Uh, I usually put a like whatever filament you think you'll print with most. I usually end up putting that PA value into the firmware it's better to have something than nothing but if you're using orca slicer then you should definitely tune pa on a material basis and it will as you slice and send the file it will update your pa value based off of the material you've sliced for um and there's just lots of little little things but a lot of it's going to be more on the i would say a lot of it's going to be more on the material side uh, material specific than probably printer specific um, but you could also you could also run some in, like on the input shaping graphs. Take a look at that, see what your results are like, and if they're wonky, you can spend some time sort of diagnosing potential issues. Maybe it's belt tensioning being inconsistent. Maybe it's um, things that are loose. Maybe it's things that are not perfectly square. Depends on how deep you know. Like, I mean, it's <laughs> how, how deep down the rabbit hole do you want to fall? But at the very least, do some input shaping, do some pressure advance, and tune some tune some filament profiles. I would say. <clears throat> uh, there are currently no official certified ERCF V2 kits, but coming soon. Okay. I know that Cyborg's, uh, I think Cyborg sells one or they've got one in the works. I've seen it recently being posted a few places. Um, someone I follow on X or Twitter uh, is, is building one or just built one. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. This just in, wait, this just in, PP is scroll resistant. 
Um, I see working well on M90S. It just took a ton of tuning and pressure. The key for me was getting the Filometrics cutter installed. Oh, nice. Nice. So you've got, you've got ERC FB2 running. What the tech is this? What is he yelling at? I don't think you guys can hear him, but Jack is just yelling at the bottom of the stairs. The silly kid. It's a silly dude. Jack, thank you very much for the 199. I don't know why. I don't think the, um, let's get for both of you guys. We need some sound effect. Oops. That's not what I wanted. I don't know why sound effects aren't working. Let's go. Perfect. And then air horn. Yeah. I'm not sure what's going on with the, uh, with the lack of sound effects right now. Uh, if you slightly rotate the pine it screws the inserts in straight. You mean using this tool or just using the pine sole with uh, the standard needle or the standard point tip? It's, inter oh, it's interesting to see the color on this change as it gets hot. Like it, it well, if you look at this, it's light, it's lighter, right? You see the lighter, I don't know if you can see it. It's like a light ring. Oh my gosh, what are we doing? There's a light ring around it. You can kind of see it. It's gonna disappear as it cools down. It's it's interesting. It, it's kind of cool that it, it, you can tell where it's warm based off of the color change. Like it's it's slowly fading. This one was also white when I first installed it. I don't know how it shows up on camera. Did anybody, completely side note, did anybody catch the um, Giga, Orange Giga Storm Max uh, Jill stream last night? I had it on for like the entire three hours. I was on the couch working on just emails, so I was kind of lurking, but Man, that thing is thing is a monster. Okay, DFH has a kit. I uh, never thought sourcing screws and nuts locally would be the hardest thing. Uh, I, I've ordered, or I've sourced quite a few from AliExpress, and I don't know that they're the, I don't know that they're the highest of quality, but they, they've worked fine. Um, also in the States, there's Bolt Depot I've used a couple of times for um, odds and ends. He'd insert that payload. <laughs> Jack wants to help with the build. Yeah, maybe. I had a V1 kit, a self source. There are many vendors selling kits, just not official. Ah, okay. Somebody out front? Nope. There's supposed to be a bunch of people coming by to mark utilities and such for the for the fence dig that I'm gonna be doing, but so far only gas and electrical has come by and I, I don't think anyone else is coming. Are you doing, no. So they, they, they did reach out to me asking if I wanted one, uh, I mean, months and months and months ago. And I, I was initially like, yeah, yeah, you know, because <laughs> I'm like, it's gonna be insane. This will be so cool. And then, and then like I had time for the sort of initial hype to settle and I started thinking about it and I started looking up the actual footprint of it, which I think is, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it's a meter cubed, I think. And then, I, and then I pulled out a tape measure. Um, <laughs> then I talked to then I talked to Aaron, and then I decided I know what's going to happen. I'm going to build this thing in the garage. It's going to take up a huge amount of the garage, and then it's going to sit there. And it's like running prints that big, unless you've got a tool head that's massively pumping out just insane amounts of material, means it's going to take days and days and days and days, even weeks to print something big. And like the, the thought of losing a ton of material to like a power blip or something silly like that in itself. But then also like I would want, I don't think I'd want to hold on to it. I'd probably end up donating it. But like how, how? I have a Corolla. <laughs> I have a Toyota Corolla. I don't see how I could possibly fit that thing inside. So yeah, I basically just said no. And then they reached out to me again, just like three weeks ago, asking again. I thought about it like, no, it's, it's just not, um, yeah, I mean, we've got a lot more space here than previously. Like I've got this big studio up here and a two car garage dedicated to stuff down below, um, or two, it's a three car, but like two, two ports are dedicated to lasers and, and CNC's and printers, but it's just so big. And, and I think that if, <clears throat> where's, where's my face? Let's go here. So I think that if it was something like, 
like a crazy big rat rig or like a Voron Phoenix or something like that, then maybe because I'm like, cool, it's it's big, but it's, you know, it's enclosed. So it's not going to get all sorts of dust and debris in it, like a, a, as easily as, as an open platform will be. It'll actually heat and I'll be able to throw all sorts of different things at it. And like with the Phoenix having IDEX capabilities, like, you know, you could maybe like, it's not quite so big, it's still big, but like you can divide that platform up into two and do two smaller things quicker. Um, but yeah, like, I think that, I think that there's going to be a market for Orange Giga. And, and, but I, I don't think, I think it's going to be niche. If you're, if you're like a lamp maker, like let's say, um, at the previous, uh, when I worked at Matter Hackers, there was a company that was selling 3D printed lamps, like big lamps and big pieces of furniture. And I think that they were, I don't remember what machines they were using, but I feel like if that's you, right, that's your company, maybe buying that and then doing a mod of the tool head so you've got a bigger, more high flow setup, like that might be a great printer. Or if you do big props, maybe that is what you need, like it's your business. But for your like average person, it's, it's just, I don't know what, like, I, I don't know. It just doesn't seem... I, I, lo I love that they did it. I love that they did it. And I'm super excited to see what Joel, Ben, Jesse, anyone else that gets one. Uh, Brian Vine said he's getting one. Like, I'm excited to see what everybody makes with them. And I will, I'm sure there'll be a little bit of like, oh, that's so cool. I wish I could print that. But it's just not, it's just not the right machine for, for me or other than showing off the cool factor. Like, it's just logistically not, it's not the right. I can't, I can't do it. So yeah, it would need its own room. Like, if I, I'm sure that if I was like, Aaron, it's, it, it, Aaron, this is happening. It's coming. She'd be like, okay, well, we'll figure it out. But I just, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing content on it though. That I am. I'm very excited. So, got my hair. Ah, I did. The gig is fine if you have a whole warehouse. Yes, exactly. Hey, Timor. Nice printer for heating your house. There you go. Rat rig 500 one. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't even, Rat Rig 500 to me is even big. Like I, realistically, the 300 or 300s I've been building have been awesome. I could see maybe going a little bit bigger than that, but it's just so big. It, I, you gotta have the hardware for it. Like I would want something really high flow to crank out wide, big parts, you know? It feels like the epitome of you were so focused on if you could, you didn't ask if you should. <laughs> That's a fun, that's funny that you say that because that's something I've been saying to Jack, not as much lately, but the first like four months of Jack's life when he learned to do things and I would look at him and say, just because you can, doesn't mean you should. And like, it's so true. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. And it's, it's absolutely, yes, yes. I a hundred percent agree with that. My ERC FP2 is almost working. Like, um, Luke, my ERC is fighting me big time. What's the issues you've been having? The pegboard on the back. This is like, yeah, 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 yeah. This is, this is Scatus. So these are the two down here, the ones I previously had. I thought I ordered four, but I ordered three because originally they were going vertical. So I put the new ones up top because there was actually a slight bit of color difference, which might just be from the, um, these, you know, these are four years old in the bottom. Uh, but yeah, these are the Scatus ones. They have them in a few different colors. So I like the wood, woody color, woody tone to them. Okay, let's let's move on to page three. Maybe this will take longer than I thought because it's uh, because it's me. Okay, so next we've got this piece, and this piece has let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six inserts. Calibration. Okay, gotcha. Calibration. Only black and white. No, they have it in this wood color. They have it in this wood color. I um, I've I purchased the two bottom ones in person at IKEA. And I per yeah, here you go, here you go, really quick. Oh, that's not, here we go. Take me to your web page. Yeah, so they've got black, white, and then they've got wood. I promise. I'm building a Vaughn Legacy that is 300 by 300 by 400. 
but uh, from an old FL Sun Cube, and that is over the size I need, but it's fun to build. I didn't even have FL Sun. So FL Sun made non Delta printers once upon a time. I've known of FL Sun for at least one, two, three, four, five and a half, six years now. I think it was when I first tested out their first, it was a smaller Delta. Um, and since then, they've definitely been a Delta only. Delta only company, so that must be pretty old. Yeah, you're the you're second person to say that, zombie. I need a heat press to build my heat press. I'll make the I'll make the suggestion to uh, KB3D to include a fully assembled um, heat press with their heat press kits. <laughs> no, it's we're making progress here. That one feels like it's sticking up just a hair, but I don't think it's. Nah, we're not we're not gonna mess that. It's fine. Okay, two more on this guy. I'll just do one at a time here. Uh, this printer is from 2019. Huh, I, I had tested out the... I'm pretty sure I tested out that Delta prior to 2019, but maybe it was right around 2019. Maybe my time timeline's a bit off. That's cool though. That's, that's cool that you're reusing it. Crucial Mark IV kit described. I'll be slowly working on that build. Nice. I think we're building one I think we're going to be building one on this channel too pretty soon here. That was crazy quick. I feel like you were just, I saw you just talking about PayPal with it maybe four or five days ago. Yeah, I think we might be building one here soon, soon. I don't know. I'm, I'm still sort of waiting on, waiting on the final word, but it seems like it. Hey, Deanna. Uh, I'm late. I'm late. Hello. <laughs> yeah, I've been, we've been doing these streams a little bit early. It's, um, Mostly because I am, I'm up now, uh, because dad life, um, I, I don't sleep in really anymore. So, um, well, I guess that's not entirely fair today. I did take a nap after Jack went down for his morning nap, but, uh, typically Jack's up at like seven 30 or so and, uh, it's rise time. So I like, I've been liking doing the streams an hour earlier, um, cause it either gives us an extra hour if we need it, or I get done a little earlier, which gives me some of the evening to work on work on other stuff. So hopefully it's not too, too inconvenient for anybody that's, you know, missing the previous time. Super quick shipping. It's a DHL, right? I think that's who they ship with. I ordered the Mark 3S plus and a mini a few years back and I, that was not quick shipping. That was when they had a, when they had like a two plus month back order or something like that. It was very slow. I mean, once it shipped, I don't remember, but the process felt incredibly long because I had to wait for, um, I had to wait months for, for it to actually ship. I originally was going to try to have the Ikea delivery people bring the stuff upstairs. That was not happening. It arrived on a double pallet and they were like, it was either leaving it in my driveway or if I moved stuff in the garage, they'd put the pallet in the garage. That was my, that was where my options. Okay. Uh, so we got that done. Wait, we're gonna assemble something. Um, is that all the heat? Hold on, let me. Is that all the ones I actually have to insert or is there more at some point here? I feel like you would have put them all at the beginning. That's it? That didn't feel, I mean, I guess it was probably quite a few, but that didn't feel so, that didn't feel so bad. All right, let's uh, let's unplug this then, put it off to the side. I like new time. Yeah, I know it's definitely better for, for Europe or, or for, um, yeah, you're in Europe, right? Yeah, got to be. Work and wait. What's up, Los? 7.30 uh, late sleeper, I see. <laughs> uh, I guess. Uh, FedEx was cheaper. Okay, you did FedEx. Maybe I did FedEx too. It's been, it's been some years. But I'm sure if I looked up the... I'm sure if I looked up the order, um, I could find it when I placed it. 
Okay, so we need our M525s and we need, so I'm assuming there's a bearing on both sides of this. So it's probably bearing, I'm sorry. Um, add, heat, add heat inserts or bearing assembly top. Insert here, fix the one linear rail. Yeah, so I imagine two of these little shim guys. There's probably one on each side. I enjoy having some chill vibes during my work afternoon. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad that I'm glad that the streams. <clears throat> I've heard that quite a few times that these streams are pretty laid back, and I and I appreciate that because I don't know I don't know that like when I think of myself I don't know that I think of myself as super laid back like a real squirrely and kind of antsy actually, but apparently that's not the vibes I I give out, um, which is cool. So it's nice to. Uh, it's nice to hear that. Hey, hey, sweet ham. It's sweet ham. <laughs> I remember he said last week, washer only on one side. Oh, really? Washer only on one side, unless it's loose enough for two. Okay. I figured it was to not have, are you sure? I feel like it was not to have <clears throat> the washers. Um... You know what? It does tell you to only print two of them. So I think that is right. I think that is correct, actually, that it is only supposed to be on one side. I only printed four because it's me, and I was like, they're small, I'll print them, I'll break them, I'll lose them. <laughs> so, I, so I did that, but um, yeah, I think you're right. I think it is only supposed to be one. Two bearings and two or four shims, depending on your print tolerances. Don't worry, this is not 2.4. Okay. Yeah, I think hopefully my tolerances are good. Is there a trick to lining this or just, you know, maybe... Compared to other, I yeah, gotcha. I'll try. I'll try a hype man stream one time with just lights and like a megaphone and and I don't know more sound effects. Uh, so this is yeah. So I'm doing holding it like this, just again bearing bearing with the flange facing opposite directions and the shim on top. And let's see if I can slide this. Okay, so the bearing stacks are good. The um, Little spacer guy slightly moved on me, so let's see. Great, all my tools are over here. Give me one second. Boom. Okay, so I will use tiny little driver to kind of align things like so. Looks pretty good. See if we can get this in there. Nope. Yay, okay. Yeah, it's not too bad. Okay, now we need bigger driver. Uh, let's see, boom. Okay, so it's not like the Voron stacks. Nope, <laughs> I guess not. And I should have known that. I remember that there was only one item that required you to print more than one. It was these guys and it was only two, but... Um... Actually, is, nine... is it going in correctly? Hmm, let me loosen this. I wanna make sure. So it's going, so it's a printed thread. And I imagine you don't actually have to go in all that far either. Let's see, there's some slack there. So let's... I'm wondering if I do go, I think we're going for dual, dual shims. I, yeah, I'm gonna try dual shims here. Let's try it, let's give it a go. I uh, know there is no trick to align them, only pain and swear. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Pain and swear. Okay, so I think I'm going to try... This is going to make it fun. Um, <laughs> this will make it a little bit trickier having to do two of them. I don't think it's totally necessary, but I have enough slack where I absolutely could do a second. So let's see if I can figure this out. Okay, okay. Well, at least you can kind of see, you know, like it's not a hidden cavity or you can see from the side what's happening. And then if you shove your little Allen key in here. Damn, it's like, it's like right at the point where Oh 
only pain and swear. That's hilarious. That I, that needs to be added to the manual, please. There's no yeah. It's just like something that says no. There's no trick. Just pain and swear. Okay, so since they're kind of wedged, I think that I can, before I forget, you have a V0 with a Kirigami. I have a Kirigami, I don't have a V0 with it installed, so I'm, I'm good on that. I I think I have a tub over there somewhere. If you have the LED for it, I, and you want to send that XR, that would be sweet, but I, yeah, I've got Kirigami, the actual um, frame. Okay, so since it's kind of wedged, I'm gonna try to just sort of put the bolt through one, one layer at a time. Let's see if we can do this. Um, I think I'll grab you since you're a little bit wider. Okay. So we've got two lined up. Kind of. Okay. Okay, so I've got it through shim, bearing, bearing, and it's the last shim. Uh, I just need something to push that a little bit. Uh, I think a small flathead is probably ideal. That's that is exactly what you are, a small flathead. Uh, you don't want it loose for the key back string. We'll fall. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll tighten this up. Oh, oh, did we get it? Oh, we're so close. We're so close. We're so close. It looks centered, so it's got to be off by just a hair in one of these directions. Uh, maybe, okay, let's remove bolt one more time so I can get a top down view. Uh, they're tight enough that they still move and there is no gap. The string will fall through. Okay. I mean, there's only two of these. We'll get this. We've, we've, we've conquered, man, that is, I can't actually see, um, phone flashlight to the rescue. So I need to send you a UFO. What is a UFO? <laughs> I don't know what that is. It sounds cool. Oh man, we are we are really close. Okay, so it looks like maybe the bottom shim just needs to be bumped here. I think if you put your driver in here like this and sort of just do a circle, it should help line everything up. So if I'm right, we should be in. Oh, I think that worked. Yep. All right. Yeah, I definitely think that two shims, I think that two shims on this guy was the way to go. That feels right. Uh, I need to order a UFO. What is a UFO? What is a UFO? Okay. That feels, that feels right. Yeah, there's no gap. I can probably tighten it a hair more. You know what? I should not tighten it. Let's let's actually not tighten it until we get the second one in. That makes a lot more sense. No one tell him. I dropped a link in your chat. Okay. In my chat. Oh, you mean in the live stream chat? All right. Let me get the second. I'm going to get the second one in bearing stack because I'm, I'm on a roll as as they say. <laughs> and and as soon as, as soon as I'm done with that, we'll check out the UFO. I just I need to conquer the second bearing stack. Okay. All right, we are wiggling, wiggling our way to the... Oh no! No! Hold on. Ooh. We got a shim, a shim gone rogue. Um, it's just kind of doing what he wants up here. There we go. Okay. So that shim is actually right where it needs to be. This shim needs to move. It's just the fact that it, it wedges makes it a little bit easier because you can sort of work on pushing things one part at a time. Okay. So I think we're actually, this one might not be so bad. Let's see. Live in a hack. It's an RGB. It's an RGB. RGB fan board. Oh, cool. Yeah, I haven't heard of it. Uh, I would be zero the Kiragami. What is UFO? 
Yeah, I'll take a quick look at it real, real. We'll, take a, we'll take a squirrel break for me to have some water and, and look at this UFO. So I would recommend anyone, if you're gonna be building one of these, I just print out two shims. Anytime there's a small part on a build, I usually just print out an extra. It's, it's usually less work just to print it out and not need it than to have to stop mid, mid build and go print out another part. So when I was printing these, I already, I didn't know I was gonna even use four, but I was like, ah, oh, they're small and all, just knowing me and small, small parts. Okay, that's plenty tight. We've still got, still got free motion. There's no gap between the bearings. It looks good. Quite happy with that. Okay, let's take a quick look at this, this UFO really quick. I'm a little interested. Oops, let's turn the phone flashlight off. Um, here we go. UFO. Someone also posted a cool little mod for the stealth press, which I'll show. Kirigami UFO. Oh, it has LEDs in it as well. Oh, when you said it's an LED board, I thought you meant like to hook up LEDs. It actually gives you LEDs. Oh my God, that's freaking cool. Yeah, that's sick. <laughs> that's super cool. I maybe the maybe the um, Cyborg V0.2 that I just did the Dragon Burner in. Uh, we'll get the Kirigami bed with the UFO. Then that's cool. And a and a bed fan. Oh, it has a. That's so cool. Yeah, that that's red. <laughs> that is very very cool. I designed my own custom heat set printer. It makes life easier. Uh, than fiddling without. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to being able to actually use this for some upcoming projects here. Someone also posted, um, really quick here, let me, someone also posted a mod for the Stealth Press. If you have a gap that's causing issues, uh, there we go. Kind of cool. So it just, it has these little pieces that go over it. And so it kind of blocks the, uh, it blocks the gap. That's really neat, actually. I, I like that a lot. You said third ad? That's weird. How many ads have people gotten? It's uh, it's an hour and a half in. So if it's every 30 minutes, that does seem right. So anyone that doesn't have uh, YouTube Premium, is it every 30 minutes you're getting an ad? Uh, did you mention Rapid Burner in that video? Great job, by the way. I don't think I did. But the reason I don't think I did was because as far, well, I haven't really looked into it as much, but as far as I'm aware, isn't Rapid Burner basically Dragon Burner, but with some slight variations to work with a Rapido? Okay, just one ad. Okay, sweet. Zero, two, no ads on Brave Browser. Okay. I would go crazy at YouTube Premium around that. Okay, so it's like roughly every 30 minutes. Yeah, there's not much I can do about it. I mean, it's the same when I was watching Joel's video last night, his stream, it was every 30 minutes on the big TV that I was getting an ad, so. A uh, quick secret tip, look at the bottom of the top part you just put together. It has two 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 millimeter holes if you make if you make a u-shaped hook for a filament piece there it will smooth any rail bumping what oh these guys he says if um if you make a u-shaped hook from filament piece there it will smooth linear rail bumping Interesting. Let me see if I've got, um, since that's a pretty good little bend there, I don't think I'd want to use PLA. I think PETG would probably work good there. Um, let's see. Do I have black PETG somewhere? Um, I know that I've got voxel, um, voxel PLA sent over their PETG, which we learned on stream the other day. Um, I can use this. This isn't black, which is what I'd ideally like to use for it, but it's a gray. It's probably the same gray that I used on stream the other day when I thought I was printing PLA. Let's do that. Um, flush cutters. Also, we'll do, I want to, um, I want to finish the stealth press before we do the stealth press giveaway. So I'm a little bit torn. How much, how, how big of a, like, so 
do you want it to be like a big U or just enough, like just pull it across completely? I'm just curious. Uh, I just have an ad blocker and I don't get any. That works awesome, the filament bumper, great design. Do you get, do you get more if I'm YouTube premium? No, um, I think that, oh, 20, 30 millimeters. Okay. So almost up to, let's just here, let's just cut. that work? That doesn't seem bad. Is that the U or, I mean, it's more like a staple than a, than a U. Yeah, so I think the way it works with YouTube Premium is like, okay, so for example, like on the regular YouTube channel, you get your ad revenue at the end of the month or yeah, end of the month. And um, I think it's based off of every thousand impressions. Uh, it's worth a certain amount, a few dollars basically. Uh, and so I think with Premium, it basically just takes the like a percentage of what everyone pays for YouTube premium and divides it amongst every channel that you've watched that you that people with YouTube premium have watched so there's like a separate I, I I believe that's how it works sweet okay cool perfect so that's we got a little bumper uh, let me focus on there yeah so that's that's for our block then to keep our I turned out I just it's like it's slightly I just, I wish it was slightly, it's slightly crooked. Maybe if I push it, oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. All right, I'm happy with that. Cool. <laughs> Neat. Hey, BBs. I just slammed mine up. <laughs> All right, let's get back to it. So we'll do, I'm gonna push it back. Right now it's 132. Let's do at two o'clock. So in half an hour, we'll open up the giveaway for half an hour from then we'll do the drawing. That gives me one hour to finish this up. I think that I'll be able to do it. So I think the heat inserts were probably the, probably the time to, okay, so this, it says, uh, this is a quality, optional quality of improvement. You can add an M312 and hand with an additional heat insert. Okay, I've got M312s. Um, I think, I'm pretty sure that's what these guys are. OCD for you, for me. <laughs> hey, monkey. I don't know if you heard, but we didn't end up going to the zoo. Uh, the weather and the time change just screwed things up. And so we're, we're rain checking it for when it's a little better, a little better weather and Aaron has a Sunday off. I warmed a piece of filament and then bent it around the X, X driver handle. Oh, that's cool. Nice. Yeah, I guess I could, can you remove it? Can you install this after or no? I would imagine it's accessible after. So maybe if it bugs me enough, I'll, I'll uh, maybe slightly modify it after, but hopefully it won't be. I don't think once it's all done, I don't think I'll mind at all. Okay, so we're gonna do this little, um, this looks like it's the second from the bottom, second from the base. It'll prevent the bearing block from accidentally sliding off. So we'll do that. So we are installing this through the rail, right? Yeah, okay, so we need our rail. Wait, we need to attach top and bottom first, it looks like. Assemble the spine. I put all bolts in designated, don't over tight. okay. Wait, when did we attach? Okay, so here everything's loose, and then here it looks like, okay, now I've got it. We're just loosely putting everything together. So this is gonna go, it just sort of um, dovetails in. So it dovetails in like that. And this dovetails in like that. Hmm, that one's loose compared to the other ones. All right, and now one hour 30 in the stream. Yeah, I will, um, again, I'll open the giveaway in, in 30 minutes. Don't forget to level the base. Thank you, zombie. 
Okay, so we'll just sort of loosely, we will install the, um, the M312 with the brass insert, second from the bottom, or one, like, yeah, second from the bottom. Hey, Aaron's here. Uh, let me know when you're hungry or if you want something to drink. Um, okay. Drink and hunger, both kind of, but I'm snacky. <laughs> uh, good plan. You want the first experience people? Yeah. It's just the, the, he's, he's ever evolving and his, um, his naps. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I like that. Uh, so that way just the block won't be able to slide off while you're messing around with things. His naps are kind of changing around a bit and with the time change, it was just like, he's either going to be exhausted or we're only going to get an hour and a half at the zoo. And I just, the idea of having to rush it, I don't know. So it will happen. I'm looking forward to it. I was sad. I was definitely bummed. I kept making jokes that Jack was like giving me a hard time for being like, so daddy, what about the giraffe you promised we'd see? <laughs> so we'll, we'll go, but just when, when the day is a little better. Cheese tortilla. Cheese, toast, toast, please, toasty. Um, I just had a mocha almond bar and it was pretty good. Yum, that sounds good. Okay, so again, we're just loosely putting all this stuff in. I won't tighten anything down until we've got them all in. Uh, how to participate in giveaway. So giveaway is gonna open in like 25 minutes. I'm, I'm pushing it back a little. Usually it's an hour and a half into the stream. But we also typically stream like an hour later, so this is early in general. But yeah, since we're giving away a stealth press as well as a spool of polymaker filament, I want the stealth press to be complete when we do it. So I'm gonna work towards work towards getting it done so that way we can see it and then do the giveaway. Food chat, it's, it's a time change though, zombie. So wait, food chat is early then, right? Because it would normally be yeah, food chat is actually really early. Depriving your child of giraffes. I know. I know. Believe me, I, I love animals. I was sad. I was the sad kid that didn't get to go to the zoo. <laughs> I wanted to go as well. I freaking love animals, man. I love the zoo. Okay. So everything's in loosely. Um, make sure all plastic parts are mounted. Linear rail straight and flush. Check if everything is dimensionally accurate. Uh, do not, okay, so everything's in loosely now, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten things up. Again, we've got our our piece of plastic up top here, which is acting as a bumper. It's doing a good job of that. And we're just going to start tightening. Go take him to the petting zoo. Yeah, he, um... My my uh, parents got him a little farm set for his birthday, and it came with a farmer, a cow, a pig, a sheep, and a horse. And um, he's, he really likes that set, so I agree. I want to I want to take him to the petting zoo. We did. We actually went. I think it was towards Thanksgiving of last year. There was a little farm close to us that. Um, had a small petting zoo, but he was just a little too little then. I think now he'd be at the point where he'd be, he'd be all about it. No spiders. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of spiders either, Jose. I worked at PetSmart and we had, we sold, I think we sold a few like tarantulas there, but I didn't work in the pet care department. So I didn't really have to interact with them all that much. It was mostly in the, the fish section, the cat, adoption section and even the small like the we had um we didn't have ferrets because they were illegal in california but we had chinchillas and boy were they fun just to like just to look at <laughs> okay i think that's good I, i'll probably do one last little pass here tighten things up um where do i sign into it uh it's not posted yet so when it's posted you will you're talking about the zoo makes me want to go to the, uh, the game reserve and do a game drive or two. Game reserve and do a game drive. Is, is that is that hunting? Are we talking about hunting? Oh, I love aquariums. Yeah, I'm um, I'm getting a fish tank in this room. So I, we've talked about this and I said that I, I, I used to be really big into fish. Um, 
when I worked at PetSmart. I was 20 at the time, so God, it's been 11 years. But yeah, I had like a 55 gallon tank with a sump and I, I mean, I was so about it. And then I had a horrible accident uh, where I lost a lot of water in my parents' floor <laughs> and, and opted to not do fish for a while. And so, and then we just moved and so it hasn't happened. But now that we're here, um, uh, my buddy showed me, there's like an all-in-one that he got that I think it's just a, I think it's a 20, I think it's a 20 gallon. And I was really looking at getting that as a curved front to it, it's gorgeous. And um, what I'm thinking about just, just going for the, I think they have a 40 gallon, I think I'm just going with that. It would be freshwater, community tank, live plants, I don't think it would be, so I don't have a, I don't know where I could do it in the background. It'd probably be, and I don't, let me see if I can show you guys. So it would probably be like, this is where you guys are at right now. <clears throat> Give you guys a little behind the scenes tour. So we've got other workbench over here with uh, printers. Then we've got closet and stuff. So it'd likely go in that far corner over there. But what I could very possibly do is run a USB cable with like a C920 and have a fish cam in the corner, which could be kind of fun. It wouldn't be in the background again, but like I can still, that way we can sort of see how things are progressing. I think that'd be fun. <clears throat> Off to more work, uh, have fun with the build. Hey, thank you so much for hanging out, Chris, and for providing the kit and the giveaway. So I will um, I will message you later on with the uh, with the winner's info. But thank you, thank you again. Curved front, yeah, it, the curved fronts are gorgeous. Yeah, maybe we'll do that then. I am definitely doing fresh and I'm definitely doing, I like live plant community. That's what we're going for, so. Maurice, thank you very much for eight months. Uh, let's see, let's, what do we got for Maurice soundboard wise? We've done almost all these, we haven't done this one. Pizza time. Pizza time. Mm. Boat front isn't the best uh, structurally, and ABS residue will settle in the water if you print in that room. I am okay with the bow front uh, for structure. It's a 40 gallon tank, so it's not, you know, hundreds of gallons. Uh, and these guys, it's, I can't think, of, I have to look at the brand. Um, they've been making this tank for years, so I, I do agree. Um, I do agree with that statement though. But as far as the ABS printing goes, I don't think I'll be doing a ton of ABS printing in here, so I'm not super worried. If I'm cranking out a lot of it, I will see if I can figure out either a filter system for the window or I will um, or I will move it to the garage, like whatever I'm printing that needs to be a lot of ABS. I have a $1,000 gallon system in my basement. My son and I breed. Oh my God, that's awesome. Cichlids. That's so freaking cool. You gotta post a photo somewhere for me. I need to see that. I need to see it. <laughs> Wildlife safari where you drive through different habitats. Oh, sick. That's really cool. There's a uh, there's a place in Arizona called Arizona that my brother lived there we went to and you drive through your car and there's just bears walking around. It's it's crazy. That's fun. That's really cool. Uh, yeah, giveaway is gonna be opened in, what time is it? I think I just said, yeah, 17 minutes, we'll open it. Okay, assembly support arms. Sweet, support arms are going on the sides next. Posting in your chat right now, okay, awesome. That's that's insane. I had, I had a buddy at PetSmart that was breeding some pretty big fish in a massive tank. Um, they weren't cichlids, I can't remember what the heck they were. Okay, so this has, it looks like we need inserts. Okay, so we do have more inserts. So let's do these inserts. Let me plug this back in. <clears throat> when I get to posting my workshop, I'll post. Oh, you had a, that's right. You did have a big tank. You're, you're not, you're not going to be like, you're not rebuilding the tank, right? Like the workshop space basically took the tank space. <laughs> Man, I'm not, I still not entirely sure how to work the menu on this guy. I think it's, I think I pressed that heat, there we go. Okay. If only you had a heat insert press, I know we're getting there. We have a drive through safari here along, along with a walk through area where you can feed animals. That's so cool. Yeah, 
Being from California, I got to go to the San Diego Zoo quite a few times, which is nuts. Uh, so this is this is going to be. It was like going from the aquarium in the Pacific to the aquarium out here. It's more of like a the aquarium out here. The aquarium of Boise is nice, but it's like I, I've been to pet shops in California or like fish shops that were the size of their aquarium. Um, but it's still really nice, and I like that you can start, you don't have, you don't have to make a full day out of it. You can just go for a few hours. One, it's a lot less expensive and it's not as difficult to walk through. So um, kids equals no time for marine tanks. Yeah, I, I, I can understand that. You, you have two, two fill, right? With the, with your youngest. We have to turn through this fire park near me. Oh, two and a half. Yeah, you're... Your baby's seven months old already? That's crazy, dude. I feel like... I thought I thought your... Uh, I thought your youngest was born more recently than that. Yeah, you're a busy guy. <laughs> you're a busy guy. Uh, went to the new SeaWorld in Nairobi when I was there for work. It was huge and amazing. I loved it. I haven't been to, I haven't been to SeaWorld in a really long time. We were actually, kind of funny story. Um, I was at SeaWorld when my brother was born. Uh, so was my dad. <laughs> um, yeah, we were at SeaWorld. Uh, my mom stayed home because she was incredibly pregnant with my brother. And, um, we were there with some of my family that was in town from out of state. And I don't remember all the details because I was five, but uh, yeah, my mom had to have my neighbor drive her to the hospital. Um, and then my brother was born before the doctor even arrived. And I don't know if I've been to SeaWorld since. I'm sure I have. I think I probably went in grade school uh, at one point. He's getting ready to crawl. Oh, man. Crawling is fun, though. Like, I mean, it's... <laughs> He, Jackson, when he, when he crawls away from you, when he knows that he, you want him and he wants to crawl away from you, he goes like, <laughs> like, it's like, it's like a laugh slash pant slash panic. It's, it's hilarious. Uh, yeah, he did, he did just turn one. Thank you very much. Yep. We got a big, a big one-year-old here. It's incredible. I can't believe it. Okay. So let's put these guys on now and it looks, uh, I'm trying to get either chat is blocking it. There we go. So there's one of these on both sides and these heat inserts are offset. They're not centered and it looks like you want them facing upward. So like favoring upwards, I suppose is probably the better, better term for it. Better way to describe it. Of course it would happen when most of the family is out. Yeah, I know it's, it's like, so with Aaron, um, there was a couple of things that were potentially like I was going to go on a hike um that was about an hour away and there wasn't service there and i i said no i'm not doing it because i was like if it, if it can happen once it can happen twice so I, I definitely i would feel awful um i would feel really bad so i did not hike this thing looks really nice um I, I, like an alternative name would be like this the sleek press or like the this i don't know like it, it just looks good yeah i i just i i remember like yeah maybe like, mm, no 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 i wouldn't forgive myself if that happened i'd be so sad i love all the silly noises babies make yeah jack jack is oh god the sound he goes woo he makes a woo a lot and uh it's just a lot of fun. I mean, a ton of work. I mean, right? Like, it's so much work. I, yeah, I can't even describe. It's like a different kind of work, but like, it's so so rewarding, man. Uh, a phrase I was told and found to be true a bit too late was the day the days drag on and it's the years fly by. Make sure you're, you're you tune in to every day with them, no matter how busy you get. Yeah, that's actually something. 
I live a lot of my life in my head. I am always thinking about the million and things I gotta do between work and videos and projects. Like, I'm very much not in the moment and I hate it. It's like, I know I'm very aware of it and I don't like it. So I'm truly trying like to put some rules in place um, to, oops, to get better at that. So I, I agree completely. I, I agree completely though with, with that statement. And, and that seems to be sort of a universal truth from uh, anyone I've talked to that has older kids now. It's just sort of like, you know, hey, like enjoy the moments, cherish the moments, be there because they, they're fleeting. So. Um, I love all the, uh, the parts look amazing. What were they printed on? Uh, a combination of things, actually. So um, a lot of it was actually printed on my switch wire with a point five millimeter Basel. Um, a lot of it was, yeah, printed on that. And then, uh, what else, what else? The rest of it, so this piece, all of the pieces in black, basically. So all the carbon pieces. Um, man, it was a combination of things. <laughs> combination of mostly switch wire, um, a tiny bit of rat rig V minion, and then the big, this big piece, and the, so all the pieces in carbon were printed on a printer that's not released yet that I can't talk about. <laughs> but it, the switch wire, I think, with the 0.5 Basel did an absolutely ridiculous job um, on the parts. I posted a pic for Discord, six. Uh, 75, 50 breeders with oh, 50 gallon sump. I gotta, I gotta take a look at, uh, I'll take a look in just a moment, Jack. Maybe when we get, when we, when we do the, uh, giveaway, I'll do it. <laughs> oh, I really want to get this. I really want to get this done by the time we do the giveaway. So that way it's, it's built. I wasn't even here yet. and got gifted memberships. Thank you. Whoever it was, uh, it was either PF or it was XR bunker. I, I don't know. I think they both gifted 10. Yeah. They both gifted 10 memberships earlier. So. Thank you, if XR and PF, if you're here. Thanks again for the, the support. Basel wear. This is the Basel that I've had since I made the video. I've just got the single Basel. Can you not get the Basel anymore? Okay, so now we're doing the strain reliefs, uh, which I think those are actually... So these guys have little... Um, yeah, there we go. So it looks like we just want to make sure that there's a tiny hole on the top that, that needs to be facing towards the back, it looks like. So like this. Uh, hearing you talk about Jack makes me smile. Makes me smile. He's, he's, he's such a cool freaking, such a cool dude. <laughs> he's such a cool kid. Initial testing with 0.4 Gamma was pretty good. Gamma though, Gamma is what? It's the tungsten. It doesn't have the like high flow internal geometry, does it? Oh wait, Gamma's, no, Gamma's slice. Uh, so yeah, I don't actually know what, other than the, I think it's a really tough material with a coating, but I don't know. I don't think it's tungsten, I'm not sure. Oh, did I miss, did I miss your question about it? Yeah, it's a, it's a tungsten, so it's a tungsten nozzle. It has sort of a cross inside of it, um, which is basically using the same sort of, um, using the same sort of technology as like what the CHT nozzles use. It increases the surface contact area of your filament as it passes through the nozzle, which is surprisingly effective at increasing your max flow rate. Oh, come on. Uh, 
Uh, it's a standard size, but all, but using a high flow adapter and extender. Okay. They, they don't make the adapter though, right? The extender that's part of the um, part of the Dragon Ultra High Flow that came with the adapter that you. I'm pretty sure the Gamma Masters are just like standard V6 size. I, I haven't looked into them too heavily, but from what I remember seeing them when they initially launched them on on Twitter, I think that's where I saw them. It dodges the CHT patent just enough. But are they not manufacturing them anymore? That looks cool. This is a cool looking, I, I really like the design. Um, I really like the design work he did with this Iconic. So it's, 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 it's nice looking. Like it's a really aesthetically pleasing um, unit. Okay, so now we're gonna spin this around. And we are going with feedback parts, which are, uh, looks like, oh, so we need a couple more inserts. So two more heat inserts. I think they're looking for another factory. Okay. Uh, $25 each. <clears throat> yeah, a lot less expensive than the Basel. Basel was, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't Basel 80? I'm almost positive that's what it was retailing at. I see Tube has to get a different machinist for some parts, the original. Oh, interesting. Giveaway link up yet? No, not yet. I think it's almost in four minutes. Four minutes, I'll put it up. Pushed it back. Uh, pushed it back 30 minutes today. I haven't looked at the likes, but if you have not, smack the like button. We're gonna be giving away both a spool of Polymaker filament as well as a stealth press kit in a moment, or I guess in 30 some minutes. Now this one was really stubborn. I think it was maybe a little over extruded. Yeah, it'll be okay. I don't think, I think this one might've been printed on the uh, Minion. Yeah, the filament's kind of rising up over it. Uh, 30 minutes or 30 squirrel minutes? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So let's try this. Uh, it looks like if this is the back of it, that this should be facing this direction. I like that it's just all M3 eighths with the exception of the bearing stacks. It's real simple as far as keeping track of what hardware to use. All right. <clears throat> Unlock the key back before you put it in. Okay, good call. This thing is cool looking. Okay, so you're saying unlock it. So let's basically, hold on, let me drop you guys down a little bit. So we are going to pull it out like this. And then, yeah, it should just slot in, I think like that, no. Wait, do I gotta remove? Yeah, I have to remove the back piece, huh? Oh, I had to do this on the, 
to do this on the switch wire too. Um, dude, I remember it being kind of a pain. Um, <laughs> uh, what was the process of removing this? I really need to try Boz. Yeah, Boz, Boz is a cool nozzle. There, no denying it. So I think, I think you have to like, just pull up, uh, pull up the center. You mean under, underneath it, right? Like the, it looks like there's a notch. Well, I think I got it. It's just a notch down underneath it. There we go. Okay. So that wasn't so bad. There's a little leg down there. Get a Dremel, get the Sazda, oh my God. We went straight to violence. <laughs> I just needed, it was the world's smallest flathead to pry it up. <laughs> Brute force is the answer. <laughs> okay, uh, we're at two o'clock, let's open the giveaway up. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Where is the link, there is the link. So again, anybody that's here, we're going to be, um, we are going to be doing two giveaways today. One will be for a spool of Polymaker filament. One will be for a KB3D Iconic Fab Stealth Press Kit. Um, you only have to enter once in the same form. And I am going to say that, uh, so it's pinned, you have 30 minutes. If you win the spool of filament, which will draw first, you are not disqualified from winning the Stealth press. You can actually win both. I'm not gonna not gonna do that in this case. But if you do win both, you're super lucky. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna at least make it where you have a chance of winning winning both. 169 viewers. Nice. It's always something something like that. 100, 111 likes. If you haven't hit the like button, smack the like button. Let's see if we can get to get to 140. I believe. Rumor has it that it increases your odds. I don't know. Something. I heard something about that. Uh, where was I? Still press. Here we go. Okay. So, unlocking. It's thick. And then we need the other piece, which is this guy. It's just it just sits in place. I guess the pressure kind of holds it up, huh? Huh. Or is there? Oh, I'm derp. <laughs> it's not the pressure that holds it in place. It's the hook. It, it hooks in place. Yeah, this press looks freaking sweet. <laughs> I thought it looked cool all along. Like from the beginning, it's always been like the one where I thought, oh, maybe, maybe I'll build one of these. And I had printed out the parts for this um, quite a while ago. I mean, well before I, I knew that KB3D was going to sponsor the build for it. Um, I just, I had printed it with the intention to eventually build one of these. Just make sure I tighten these up. I think I did. Yeah, those are plenty tight. Okay. Key back is in place. Unlock it. Wait, what do you mean unlock it? What do you, I don't, I thought, isn't this unlocked? I'm not sure. What do you mean? Yeah, I thought, it, oh, I was like, I did unlock it. <laughs> Let me yell that. Uh, Milo next week. No, I don't. I don't have word on when Milo is. Uh, like I haven't gotten tracking like that yet for it. So next week we are going to be doing an unboxing of the T three hundred. And the following week we are doing a final recap of the underwire. We'll put the enclosure on it and kind of take a look at the finished printer. And then after that, it's TBD. There's like three things in the works. Um, so we will see, TBD. I'm starting to lose both, so I've entered. I'm starting to lose both. Uh, every, everybody, everybody eventually has to win. I guess that's not entirely true, but I feel like, I feel like it's always that way. Like, um, 
I've gotten so many responses on the Polymaker giveaway links or winners. Like I say, oh, thank you. Like I always enter, I never win. So everybody has their day. <laughs> Let's see. Um, add heat inserts. Oh, neat. Okay. Insert in build plate. Cool. Okay, so build plate. We've got two more inserts. It's not real pretty down here. I'm warning you. It's definitely uh, the nozzle was too close, and I think I think it was prime. It was a little bit of flow needs to be toned down, but also nozzle was too close, and because I think it was such high infill, uh, there wasn't really any way for such high infill with so many top and bottom layers, there wasn't really a good spot for it to escape to the extra filament, but functionally it's fine. Aesthetically, I'm hiding it. Uh, is the kit locked to just the USA? No, it's not. It's global. Uh, next batch has been dispatched to retailers. Upcoming batch dispatch mid. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I think that I was told end of March is when it was showing up, but I, I don't know. I need to print. I need to print a lot of parts for it. And again, with the other, there's a few other little guys that are probably going to be happening as well. So if Milo shows up and we're doing a short build that's a few weeks. I, I'll figure out how to juggle that. I hate printing large flat surfaces. Yeah, it's definitely the, I'd say the trickier part of the lot. I printed it actually a couple of times. I ran out of filament in one case. Um, I ran out of filament in one case. And then, yeah, with this printer I was testing out, I had some, I had some weird offset issues happening initially. I think it was user error. I tend to, tend to lean more towards that unless Something happens multiple times. If it happens once, I assume it's just me. Like, ah, I probably did something wrong. I haven't won in 62 years. Well, it's, it's, it's bound to, it's bound to be right around the corner then. That's my opinion. I don't feel like I've, I don't, feel like I've won very much as far as giveaways go. Then again, I don't actually enter into a lot of them, which is probably part of it. I think for a lot of my life, I just assumed that all giveaways were rigged. And now like the main ones would be the 3D printing ones, but I feel bad entering in because it's like with, with all the printers and stuff that get sponsored for builds, I'd kind of rather let someone else in the community. Um, I don't want to take someone else's slot, basically, is what I'm getting at. Okay, uh, so add heat inserts back at the build plate bolts. So I think we're just going to. Uh, they used to, you're saying it's rigged. <laughs> I'm not saying this is rigged. I can assure you it's not, but you know, believe, believe it or don't, that's fine. Um, okay, so this is going around like this. Okay, and then we are going to bolt. I think we need to pop that guy off, but I think we do it after. Um, so we are going to bolt. Let me raise you guys up. Uh, you. Wait, you... it's been 84 years. That would be the most hype giveaway to win, like unironically. <laughs> I got nozzles here and had them on from Joel's stream. I think I have no more giveaway streaming left now. Those were two years ago. Well, it was funny on, when we started doing the Polymaker giveaways on here, um, there was a lot of like regulars winning and uh, repeats. I mean, I think there was, I don't know for certain, but I swear there was one time where a person won two weeks in a row, but it hasn't been like that for a while. I don't know, like, I haven't changed anything about the way I copy and paste names in. The number of um, shuffles changes every single week. So I don't know what the heck. I don't know. I really don't know. 
Yeah, you won one. I remember, I actually remember when you won tour. I think it was around the time I was building the uh, Merc, wasn't it? I think you were you were trying to get the Galaxy. I remember talking to you about the Galaxy uh, filament. I usually don't win, but I won three times here. Nice. <laughs> nice. Okay, so this is held in there. I think we need to put some more bolts in the front. We lost okay, let's time for time for hype music. Let's go to our eight bit. Okay. I don't actually see it telling me to put bolts in the front, but I'm pretty positive. Oh yeah, yeah, it does, it does. Okay, so we also need to lean back. Uh like that. Man, I'm getting low on M3. I don't think I have enough M3 hardware. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to find other M3 hardware. M3 8 mil. Okay. Uh, yep. And I love the Galaxy filaments. It looks yeah, they're freaking awesome. I'm a. I'm more of a sucker for glittery filaments than I ever thought I would be. Why are we not aligning? Why are we not aligning? Is there a warp that I'm not seeing? Nope, we're in, we're in, I feel it. Uh, will leaning this back like that put pressure on the bed cable? <laughs> yes. When, when actually it's kind of, I mean, I don't know, I'll say it's funny. I am the king of leaning a printer back and realizing, oh crap, I forgot to unplug the uh, power cable to it. And so when it came out about the A1, I like immediately went to check mine, assuming that maybe when I built it, I did that. But it doesn't look like it. I don't see any sort of external, um, like the swelling or anything like that, but I still haven't used it. I, I They reached out to me also and asked if I wanted to swap out the unit or um, just do a cable swap. So I'm on I'm on the list like everyone else for a cable swap whenever, whenever it becomes available. Okay, so that's bolted in place. We need to pop this off. And I am slightly scared about popping this off because again, the nozzle was a little bit too close, so. Um, I'm hoping we can do this without... Ooh. Did it work? No, it didn't. Ah, oh, I knew this was gonna happen. Ah, oh, this is gonna suck. Um, because of... Because of the nozzle being close, it it nearly welded the gap. There's supposed to be like a slight gap right here around this ring. Um, hmm. I don't know. I might have to. I have a feeling this is going to be my sort of undoing. Um, so what I might end up doing is playing around with this guy. This isn't gonna stop the build, the rest of it, because we're basically, we're getting there. So what I might end up doing is playing around with this later. I might have to take it back off and sort of go around and yeah, reprint it, have any KB3D pry bars. Yeah, if I need to reprint it, I will, but I'd rather not if I don't have to, because it is nice carbon fiber filament. And all I, basically all I need to do is remove that ring so I can glue this little guy in place. So for right now, I'm just gonna place that on top and we'll act like it's in place. Uh, deburring, deburring tool won't work for this because you, you need to remove this area. I don't, I don't think a deburring tool would work that well. Um, flathead could work. Flathead might work. Uh, let's see if I can get a little side, side to side action here. It was part of my concern and I saw it in advance and I almost thought to I almost thought to try to pop it off before stream just to verify, but I was like, no, let's just hope for the best. And uh Yeah. Um 
wondering if I don't want to hurt myself either. Yeah, I'm gonna wait. I already lost some skin. I'm gonna wait. Yeah, yeah, it's the whole outer rim is basically stuck to it. Heat the screwdriver up. Ideally, a larger flat screwdriver would be would be nice. Um, mm, 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 this one's slightly larger. Let's go away from my hand. I don't know, guys. Um, Like I'm all for, I'm all for trying. I think it's gonna take quite a bit of effort. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, just model a smaller insert and glue it in. Nah, I want to do it. I want to do it right. A tip of a soldering iron, something small, low heat. Yeah, I could, I mean, with a soldering iron, it's gonna melt it though, and I'm gonna have to scrape away at it. And it's also, um, this is this is really high temp, the PET stuff. So, I think, I think that if I play around with it long enough with a flathead, I can get up to this wall and potentially pry it out and then just clean up the edge with like a little bit of, like a file or something like that. But I don't, I, I want to take my time with it, um, so I'm probably going to hold out on putting this cap piece in right now. And we'll just move on to the next one. I think that's probably the, the move right now. I mean, worst case scenario, I can reprint it. I also have, actually. I have another one of those pieces, but it's, I think it's even worse as far as, um, as far as it being nearly welded, the piece is just, yeah, this one's even worse, I think. Um, yeah, it's doing the exact same thing. Uh, let's see if I can slide this underneath here. Oh, okay. So this one, this one did the same thing. Looks great from my house. <laughs> this one did the same thing, but I was able to get it a little bit further. So I wonder now that I've got it started, if I can just sort of walk it. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh. I think we can do it. I think we'll just use this one instead. Let's see. Maybe. I think I need a bigger freaking flathead too. I need something, something that I can get a little bit more. Mm, this one might be too big. <laughs> I've only got like small or very, yeah, that sacrificial piece requires different EM tuning. Yeah. I, I had a feeling, I mean, again, this, this printer, when I was, this was a, a new printer I was testing out and I had a feeling it was going to be an issue. I had some feeling it was maybe going to be an issue. Yeah, I'm going to hurt myself. Yeah, I'm going to hold out. I'll either reprint it or again, I'll, I'll play around with this other one, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to use brute force. <clears throat> Sawzall, yes. Okay, let's put the let's put the hot end piece on. Also, what time is it? Is it time to do a giveaway? No, oh, ten more minutes. Okay, M three eight. I might punch it. We'll see. And punching is never uh, punching is never off the table. Okay, M three. These are our last four M three eights here.
I might just end up reprinting it. Mill it out with Milo. <laughs> I don't want to wait that long to use this. I want to use this for Milo. Reprint the cap smaller. Yeah, that is the that is the simpler way to do it. So this piece is in ABS. Uh, it's the only piece. I think this is the only piece I printed in ABS. It's carbon ABS. Uh, you should reprint it with a drawer base remix. Do you have a uh, do you have a link to that? It could be cool to have a little drawer to throw these heat insert uh, pieces into. Oh no! Don't forget the key back. Ah! I did goof. It says right here in fire. Don't forget the key ring strain before fixing the arm bolts. All right, well, I'll undo this really quick. Use some rubber pads to stop it from moving, looks like. Yeah, rubber pads would not be a bad idea. I am, I am pushing, and this is also on top of quartz, but yeah, I think that having, um, Sticky pads on the bottom wouldn't be a bad idea. Hey, Caitlin. Yeah, this thing is this thing is a really, really well thought out um, press. The only issue I've had was self-inflicted, and I, I knew it. Like looking at it, I knew prior that it was probably gonna be an issue. But I was like, Nah, like maybe it'll work. But no, nah, it it didn't. Okay, so we need to take the key back and pull it over here, over the top, like. So, pull it down here and not let it go. Um, let's see. So it will hurt. Oh no, I've got blood on my nail. <laughs> no, I'm bleeding. That flathead, that big flathead got me. I can't see if I'm aligned. Holy crap! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> All right, <laughs> we have lift off. So yeah, the, the printer gods have been appeased. It's been a while. It's been a while. I think since I've I've uh, cut myself on a 3D printed part or 3D printed project. So it was it was due. I was overdue. Oh no! Where did the? Uh... Oh, it's already there. Yeah, the fill <laughs> the fill and bumper came in handy, and it survived too. Do you recommend taking off the ring? Is that I feel like probably right? Yeah, that ring's probably in the way. Why don't you bring the rail guide to the top of the rail? The rail guide to the top of the rail to see what you're doing. I don't. I don't know what you mean. Bring the rail guide to the top of the rail. Oh, you mean just raise it up so it's eye level? Cool. Thank you, Frank. I 
I think we probably need to put more heat inserts in the front of this. These are probably the last two, I would imagine. Yeah, they are. Okay, also, what time is it? Okay, five minutes and we're giving away a spool of Polymaker filament and a Stealth Press kit. So if you have not entered in, do so now. It is getting close to final call. I printed a mod for the keyback. Uh, I can't read. There's a heart on the screen over your message, but. Nope. How, how, what, how to enter another giveaway? It's been pinned, it's been pinned in chat for close to 30 minutes. There's a form, there's a form in chat. Yeah, it definitely goes, ABS is just a nice, oops, ABS is a really nice material for the heat inserts. I, I don't know, I, I guess maybe again, it's the heat resistance of that PET that I have, but it, it doesn't put up as much of a fight. Ah, I did it at an angle. Hopefully it's okay. Yeah, I'll be fine. Uh, right as you say, it's been pinned for 30 minutes ad. Yeah, it seems like E2 is getting a little more aggressive with the uh, ads. I don't know. ABS is my favorite filament type. Any version of what I print now is all ABS. I like it except for the stink and the buildup. I, I mean, again, now that I've got the garage, it doesn't really matter. But before, when we didn't have a garage period and everything was in the house, it, it it was in the living room in our, in our condo. I didn't even have a room. It was our living room. Um, I didn't love that. But as far as the properties of ABS, I, I really do appreciate them. Okay, so we need two more M38s, which I need to quickly find uh, for this. Uh, this. So let me see if I've got some. Um. Mm -hmm. Let me check in my, I have a little tool, a little screw organizer in the closet really quick. The ABS and resin were stinky. <laughs> yeah. In our first, in our first uh, apartment, the resin when i got my first resin printer it was in the living room it was a horrible idea um and then i ended up finding that i could we it came with like a closet that was external uh right outside the front door of our one second here m3 Why don't I, I don't even see a cubby for m38s that doesn't make sense I got M three twelves, M three sixes, M four eights. I don't understand. I'm, um, I wonder if I can use for this really quickly an M three twelve. It's probably gonna be too long. But yeah, I ended up finding out that I could use a bulb, like a bulb. There was no there was no outlets in the in the um, closet room, but there was a bulb, and so I was able to swap the bulb out for an like AC inlet and use that instead. Uh, I also printed the handle. It's a great mod. I could see a handle being useful. I don't know what to do about this. Um, These last couple screws. Uh, this might be an M38. I think I just found one. Where's my KB? Oh, JD, there we go. Oh, 
I think, okay, I think I found two, two loose ones. Man, we are getting a slim, slim. I think this is it. I think we have the exact amount we need. Let me get these last couple of screws in here. For some reason, so this is what I wanted to show off too. So this part, right, looks like it has hardcore Z banding on it. I don't know how well it'll show up actually in person. Let me see, can you guys see that? It looks like it has hardcore Z banding. And I thought that it was on the printer. Um, I thought it was because I was testing out this new printer and I was like, wow, that's weird. And then so I ran it on two other printers that didn't have any Z banding issues with previous parts I printed and it had Z banding. I don't understand why. It was, it was bizarre. I don't, I don't understand why. So we're going with this one because it's the best, it's the best I was able to get, but it's still really strange to me why. I, again, I don't know the Z banding, but it, it sure looks like it. it just has artifacts. Yeah, I, it's, uh, flow tuned for that filament. Yes, yeah, it, um, I mean, I had printed quite a few stuff in this exact same filament and it was fine. It's bizarre, like it, it, it really threw me once I like switched it over. I think it was to the V Minion. Uh, this is what this one was off of. And I was like, dude, the V Minions printed this material beautifully. What gives? So it has to be something with the slicer in this model. This particular one, I, I don't know, again. Did I goof? Is this supposed to also have heat inserts? I have a feeling I'm, I need to put heat inserts in this too. Let me look. Insert. Oh, from the back. Can you insert from the back? No. Oh, I need to put heat. Okay. So I do need to do heat inserts there. Okay. We'll do the giveaway and then I will um, take that part off, do the heat inserts and put the handle on. There are some vertical tapers that just make it funky with the slicing algorithm. Maybe that's it. You put two inserts in the back. No, I, I didn't. <laughs> Once I put it on there, I realized it's probably supposed to be some heat inserts there. I'll, I'll put them on after. Let's see the drawing and then I'll uh, I'll take that off, put the heat inserts in and then get this, uh, get this put together. Okay, so I'm removing, let's see. I am removing the link. I am deleting the link. It's a feature. <laughs> All right, if anyone's filling out the form, you've got, I don't know, 60 seconds, and then I'll download it and we'll do it. Uh, how many entries we got? 139, nice. Ooh, 134 likes. Can we hit 150 likes before the drawing? Can we do it? We just need 16 likes, I believe. I believe we can do it. All right, 10 seconds, I'm downloading, downloading this. 140, 140 responses. Five, four, three, two, and that's it, 140 it is. All right. Downloads. Okay. Go here, Sony Cap. Give away, download, there we go. Bam. Replace existing file, sure. All right. Aaron, you are the first person to enter in. Dean, you are the last. <laughs> All right, here we go. Bam. Okay. We did it, 151, thank you guys. 
Okay, let's do this. So, again, we are going to be giving away a spool of Polymaker filament first. So that'll be the first drawing. And then the second drawing will be for the Stealth Press kit from KB3D. Both of these drawings are international. Um, shipping is international on them. And if you win the first one, you're still eligible to win the second one. So I think that basically is it. So. Um, as always, for Polymaker, thank you for allowing us to do this. Polymaker is awesome. They've continued to support the channel and um, are continue, continually supporting the channel this year. They're providing uh, the filament that will be used for Milo and just have been an awesome, uh, an awesome company. So, and, and then also massive thank you to Iconic Fab and KB3D for, uh, well, for Iconic Fab for making the Stealth Press, um, which again is a super cool a super cool heat insert tool um, and the instructions are are nice like it's nice that there is colored pdf instructions and then kb3d as well for providing the kit so we can build this on stream and then also being willing to put up another one for shipping international for someone else to win so um, on that note dark third dimension asks if we can do 29 shuffles for his 29th birthday Unless someone has, unless someone's got a strong reason why we shouldn't, I think that that sounds, I think that that sounds like a perfect number of shuffles for this. Are we good with that? All right, Marie says go for it. I think we go for it. It's his birthday. It's his birthday. Come on, twenty nine. Do you? It's your final year before you hit your thirties. Let's do it. All right, twenty nine. It is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. All right. We're also happy birthday. <laughs> let's get. Hold on. Before we let's get a little like um uh air horn. Birthday air horn. Okay. Good luck, everyone. In three, two, and here we go. Lucas! Lucas Reyes! You are... Reese? Reese. Rise? I don't know how to say it. I'm gonna go... Just Lucas, that's all that matters. Lucas, you are our winner. I... Let's see if I go... Nope, wrong one. There's too much happening right now. There we go. There we go. Lucas, you are... Wait, our first winner! That's right, we're doing a second winner! <laughs> I forgot! <laughs> okay, we got one more. So let's go... Uh, let's go back. Lucas, you are not being removed. So you are the winner for the Polymaker Spool of Filament. Let's go back to desktop. You're still here. So we will not remove you. We'll just close. Okay, so you're still in here. Okay, so now we have to shuffle a second time. We gotta we gotta reshuffle now. Banana, banana. <laughs> Zombie, thank you for the dollar forty nine. Okay, so we will shuffle again. Twenty nine again? Twenty nine again? I, I can do twenty nine again. We'll do twenty nine again. Alright, we'll do twenty nine again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, here we go. Good luck. In three, two, this is this is for the stealth press kit. Three, two, and one. Here we go. Hey, Chikoro! That's a familiar name. Congratulations. Congratulations! I don't know if you're here still. Uh, let's do air horn, and then. Uh, I wonder what's for dinner. Perfect. Congra hey, there he is. Yeah, congrats, man. I think you missed a shuffle there. No, I counted. I counted twenty nine. That was twenty nine shuffles. Congratulations. So I will not always active. No, no worries. I I am, I am big on lurking. I watch a lot of streams, especially Steve's. I'll have him on like the TV. But I'm doing stuff or I'm in, you know, in my office. I know I get it. Absolutely. Congratulations. So I will reach out to both winners um, today. I don't know for for the Polymaker Spool winner. Um, I will send you an email with the form. Uh, Chikoro, as far as for KB3D, I will pass along your info or, or, or just I'll message him and see what he needs. He might just want me to grab your shipping info and I'll, I'll give that to him. So. But yeah, congratulations to both of you guys. That is awesome. And once once again, thank you to Polymaker and KB3D for letting us do this. And and Iconic Fab, of course. So okay, let's let's quickly finish up here. 
my whoopsie. So there is one or two more heat inserts that need to go in here, which is what allows us to clamp. So let's remove you. And the good news is, is that I think I can use an M312 for these guys, um, which is perfect because I am, there was the exact number of M38s left over from, um, actually, these M38s might be for the switch wire enclosure. I might need to order some screws before before we revisit that, now that I'm thinking, out, uh, thinking about that. Let's... <clears throat> Las Vegas Raiders colors. <laughs> That's funny. I am I am not a Raiders uh, fan. I am a I am a Steelers fan. Although I think my grandpa I think my grandpa was a Raiders fan, but he I think he was a Los Angeles Raiders fan before they before they'd moved. Uh, KB will take care of the shipping, have fun with the build, and if you're willing to you push your build, the printables, cheers. Yeah, yeah, definitely, um, if you don't mind, Chikoro, when you get around to building it, to post some photos. I'd love to see what, what color choice and stuff you went with, and if you do any mods. It sounds like there's quite a few mods, which is, which is really fun. Part, part of, um, part of the... Part of the uniqueness about this one being so much printed parts compared to the other ones is that it does make modability fairly simple to do. It looks good to me. How about Oakland Raiders? <laughs> I've just never been a big Raiders fan. I got nothing against them per se. When I, I worked at a sports bar for some years and I think that my least favorite football team is Green Bay um, because of the fans. They were always really obnoxious and they never tipped and were not super nice. So I'm not saying all Green Bay fans are, but specifically at the bar I worked at, it was a group that always came in with their Green Bay jerseys and they were not my favorite. Okay, so that's on. Now we can reinstall this. Ghost dealers, yes. Yeah, my dad's been a Steelers fan for like my whole life. So remember, he, he I don't he probably still has it. I'm sure he does. It's like a director's chair, um, but the back of it has the Steelers logo on it. I don't watch a ton of football. Like I just usually too busy to actually sit down and watch, but I'll try to watch an occasional game, um, especially if I know my dad's watching. So, so we we'll, we can talk about it. It's always like fun to talk about it. And then. Of course, like once it gets to the uh, playoffs, I I try I try to watch then if they if they're in the playoffs. Yeah, that's some really good. Just uh, left. If you want harsh chance, go to any UK football match. They're brutally funny. <laughs> uh, most Green Bay I have worked with are great. Uh, yeah, I'm sure they I'm sure that they are. Go Gryffindor. <laughs> Yeah, I, I only watch Quidditch, uh, Quidditch matches. Okay, so we've got this back on. Check alignment. Alignment looked good. I mean, again, I, I don't have the cap on, but that seems fine. I feel like you'd really have to have done something kind of off, uh, maybe printed the wrong bracket for alignment not to be right. Go back, uh, go pack go Viking stick. Hey, Norton. Okay. So yeah, this says to use M38 bolts for the iron. I'm gonna use the next size up that I have, which I believe, 
Seven through 12, so let's see. <laughs> Where did you go? Oh, are these M38s? No, these look like 12s. I might have just found, I might have just found the more M38s. I did, sweet. I just, silly me didn't put them back in the right spot. So they're, they're not, um, they weren't where I thought they would be. Okay. So let's get these started. I don't think, I don't feel like we're gripping. What's happening? There we go. Okay, so those are loosely in. Yeah, I do think, I do think I could definitely use some feet on this guy. Is that a mod that most people are doing, putting feet on this? Oh, this is, that's probably part of the reason why it was wobbling so much, let me see. Yeah, there was <laughs> there was a piece of plastic underneath it, but I still think some grippy feet could be cool. Okay, so we are using this guy. So slide this down. Nope, am I goofing? What am I doing wrong? Did I tighten it too tight already? I have sticky feet. You think it needs to be looser? Add some compression feet. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna put some feet on here. I'm, I know I've purchased little rubber, like 3M adhesive feet before. I just, I don't know where they are. I'll have to order some. Okay, so I'm gonna remove this completely until I get this guy in, because maybe that's what it is. I don't think so. I don't feel like I added, I don't think I threaded it in enough where it would have made a difference. Is that the correct? I hope it's the correct mount. I'm pretty sure. Um, slightly at an angle. And that's an issue. This is probably so look, check it out. Um, I, I think I need to remove this. Uh, so it's hitting the side. I think that's because when I, there's just two screws and I probably just need to um, slightly wiggle it. Yeah, maybe it is supposed to be that tight. I mean, I, I imagine you want it fairly, uh, fairly gripped on pretty well, at least in the carriage mount, yeah. Oh, you think the carriage mount, not this guy? Yeah, you might be right. It might be the carriage mount that actually is the one that needs some adjustment. <clears throat> Yeah, there's a little bit of there's a little bit of play there. Okay, so let's let's put this guy back in. Ooh, like a glove. Okay, so I'm actually gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it centered there, roughly in the um in the center, and slowly tighten these guys. I'll probably readjust this once I get that final ring in place if need be, but this is this is much better. So the carriage, the carriage arm has a tiny bit of play. Yeah, that's much much better. Uh, you should be able to twist the mount a touch. Yeah, the I did adjust the mount a slight, um, a little bit, but it seems like a zombie suggestion with the carriage. There's a little bit more play in there, so. Yeah, that looks much better. Does that mount, uh, does that mount block the buttons? Um, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore, it doesn't. So, it did, but uh, if I move, I just probably to push it a little bit further. 
you still have access to both of the both the buttons here and you can still see the screen. I can probably even move it here further down like that. It's still tons of clearance. I mean, I don't think I'll ever, um, I don't think I'll ever, never say never, but not often at least need to go higher than that. Okay, so now that we've got that in place, we can put these M38s in to clamp. I don't actually think it needs a clamp. Um, it, it friction fits pretty damn well but we'll do it just to fill these fill these holes here Oop. i actually don't know that m38 will uh, okay i just need to push them further there we go that's it was user error i needed to push them further in Okay, I'm not gonna go super tight with these because it's, again, it's already, it's already real snug. Um, I say that and here I am tightening it too tight. All right. Okay, sweet, so that's there. <clears throat> Shouldn't the soldering iron be fitted higher? I don't, I don't know. Should it be? Frontal opening allows to press the buttons. Okay. So you think get the buttons above then? I will probably need to loosen what I just did. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how it's supposed to sit. But yeah, if you want it, if you think it should be up higher, then we'll do that. Whoa, why did stream elements? That is weird. I don't know why stream elements sent a bunch of stuff at once. Uh, okay. Okay, so we, so it does, it does block the button though. So you're saying like for future, you just, for anyone that's using this with like a TS-101, you just press, you just use like a, I don't know, something else, like a tool to press the buttons. I, I at least can't reach that. I mean, with a with a pencil, I can. <clears throat> I use my pinky finger. I can use my pinky finger. Yeah, I use my pinky finger as well. Okay, we'll do that then. Cool, that sounds great. Now I have way more travel. I just, I, I guess I wasn't sure I was supposed to sit and I, it seemed right that the screen was gonna be lower, but cool. Uh, you print a tool, you print a tool to turn it on. Yeah, I think I can do it with my pinky. <clears throat> okay, let's tighten this back up then. It sits a little bit better too. The part that I was pushing it down through is wider. I mean, you can obviously see it's quite a bit wider, so it's not putting quite as much compression on the iron, which is again, probably because that's how it was designed. And I just, I didn't realize that. I feel like I'm tightening it more, way more than it needs. Let's leave it like that. that yeah, that's, <laughs> that ain't going nowhere. <clears throat> um, use a toe to press the button is what I heard to use. I, if, if I can't get it with my pinky toe, I mean, my pinky finger, I ain't getting my pinky toe. Regardless of what she said, she said to you, I don't think she, to read it. Wait, what? Remember what she said? She said. Uh, 
said it to you. Uh, for different use cases, but when you're prototyping quick parts and don't want to throw out the metal inserts with the path, search up R-type nylon rivets. Wait, what is it? For different use cases, but when you're prototyping quick parts and don't want to throw out metal inserts with the path. Oh, nylon rivets. So you're saying they can be used in place of inserts? Use the small thumbs. They're not that small. They've grown. They've grown. Uh, I did not manage to break TS10 doing gazillions of tests. Hopefully you will not too. <laughs> yeah, I probably, I think it'll be fine. It, it feels snug. It's, uh, it's not quite centered anymore. I think I slightly tweaked it. So I don't think, um, I don't think I'll worry about perfectly centering it until, until I get that new piece on. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still going center, or I mean, it's still going in the center hole now, but it's definitely favoring left which is probably just from me tightening it. It, it slightly, um, it slightly turned the iron. Huh, cool. Uh, I could print a button, could print a button and drill a hole in the plastic and build like a hinge button. Yeah, I don't think it's totally necessary though. I mean, when I turn it on, I'm quite literally just gonna probably hit that button, let it heat up and then go for it. With a, with a pinky, it's not bad. I guess I was trying to use my pointer finger, which just give it a nice twist. Oh, that, that really is all it needs. <laughs> that is all it needs. It's a nice little twist. Thanks, zombie. Yeah, that's no, perfect. It's right in the center. Okay, so last thing I think really, um, until I get the bottom plate reprinted is the cable, right? Cable routing. Um, piece of filament. What does the piece of filament do? So you route your USB or your power cable through here. So and the filament, does the filament just help keep it trapped in place? Yeah, keyring needs to keyring needs to come off. I should have done this prior. You stay up there. All right, key rings off. That's tight. That's still centered. Uh, I don't use a piece of filament. I take out the cable when not in use. Gotcha. I think I, I might use a piece of filament. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Um, I This USB cable was specifically, I found it and was like, yeah, this will be perfect for this. It's a uh, 240 watt cable. Um, so let's go like that and like this. You know what? I might need a longer cable. Um, now that I'm thinking about this, uh, let's see. Okay, that's perfect there. Okay, I definitely see why the film, or the, um, I'm trying to think, ah, this is probably okay. If I, if I do it like this, I've got like, I'm trying to show, like this is how much slack I've got. Um, and then I've got the brick right here. So if I plug this in like this, I don't need a whole lot of distance. And I think I'd kind of be, oh, that popped out, I guess. I need the filament again, but. So that's in, and I guess I can do most of them close to the edge like this. So I might be fine. I have a two meter cable, Amazon Basics supports 15 volts. Yeah, this one's nuts, dude. Uh, these are these were fairly pricey cables that I bought at one point, and these these um, they heat up really freaking quick. So let me, <clears throat> I am gonna cut a piece of filament in this case, and just see for now how it goes. Um, so let's turn this guy. Oh, 
like so. Pass this through here. Oh, there's no hole in the bottom, so it stays in. That's freaking clever, man. I like that. Okay, so let's cut this guy off. Nice. Yeah, that looks really good. Uh, do you want to stay later at work or not? It would be nice to get out of early on Friday. No, go home. Go home. Especially, do you mean for the stream? No, no, no go home. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna call it in a second here anyway. Um, yeah, this thing looks sick. I'm really happy, really happy that it turned out. Again, the base I'm gonna play around with probably, probably a little bit, but I might end up reprinting it. If someone's saying there's a modded version that has a little drawer, that might be useful just to keep all these heat inserts with it since that's where I'll be using them with. Um, and I would just reprint them in the same carbon fiber ABS. So I think the game plan Game plan for me as far as with this is a new base uh, with a better Z offset and flow dialed back and putting some grippy feet on it. I think other than that, I'm ready to rock. Um, yeah, this thing's this thing's really freaking cool. Yeah, it turned out awesome. I'm, I, I like the gray glass and the black carbon fiber look. I think it looks sweet. We'll do, we'll do, um, do I have anything? Okay, cool. Let's do let's do an insert. <laughs> we'll do we'll do one insert. So let me. It says it's heating. Let me put my pinky finger. There we go. All right, let's let's do. Uh, this was an extra part I printed. I ended up using I ended up using the carbon ABS instead of the glass for this. And those colors reminds me of the A1 Mini. <laughs> really? The A1 Mini is white though. I like white, I guess white and gray. Uh, I, I know I have been, I have to be in town until later today anyway. I'd just be hanging out. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Oh, it feels so fun. Like, like it feels so weird after, after using my, uh, just my hands. I don't think, oh yeah, it's only at 280C, that's why it's struggling. This is that, this is that glass fiber stuff. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to actually using it for the next build that we do. Yeah, it, it definitely, it feels cool. Like, it's, it's pretty freaking cool. Like, I don't have to worry about holding it straight. I don't have to, like, I can, I can squirrel around even harder. The only thing I have to remember is to not let it go too far in. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's pretty freaking sweet. I've already used mine three times today. Yeah. I feel like low and slow get you the best results for heat sets, though that does take the time. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is, this is super cool. Let me unplug it from here so it cools down. Let's do like a, let me see if I can get like one quick little pan of it for you guys. I don't have, I don't, this one doesn't have a handle on it, so I can't do like an actual pan. This is, once that little cap's on there. Uh, if something goes wrong, just let go of everything. Yeah. No, this is sweet. I'm I'm really happy with how it turned out. I gotta find a place for it. Um, I might that might be that might be a cool mod for it. Is some kind of zombie? You mentioned a clip down below. I could see that being cool. Like that way, I can sort of loop this around and just clip it here to keep it from dragging. I mean, again, this cable's not all that long, so it's not a huge deal. But still, um, maybe I'll just keep it on the bench back here. I don't know. I'll I'll figure out. Uh, Scatis? Dude. Nah, I don't know how i do it with the key back, actually. I'm like, a Scatis mount for this? That'd be cool. I'll figure out something. Worst comes to worst, it'll... Yeah, I don't know. I'll figure out something for it. Uh, it's really nice because you can also press parts up onto the iron. 
Oh yeah, good point. If they don't have a flat bottom, just, yeah, and it holds it perfectly flat. The retractable keychain is pretty neat. I once used that to get a uh, limp robot arm enough weight to be useful. <laughs> I feel like that trick should be used more everywhere. I was already I was already thinking of a wall dock. Yeah, a wall mount would be cool. Well, you know, even with the key back, a wall mount could still totally work. Um, it would need to come out, but I would imagine, I mean, some of this stuff goes out pretty far as is. Um, I'm wondering if I design just sort of some arms. Um, yeah, maybe like right here. This is kind of a perfect spot for it to live. I might play around with some basic uh, is like ideas for it, but I'm thinking maybe just two different brackets, one for the top that like loops right underneath here, and then maybe a secondary one that um, goes under the key back, if that's even necessary. Maybe just one is all that we'll need. Yeah, I'll figure out something, but that, that's like the perfect little spot for it right here, um, where I can easily grab it and use it when I need it. The drippy bucket, oh, thanks. Yeah, I love, I man, I don't hold on to a lot of prints that long. I'll try to give them away if I can. Um, but this drippy bucket is one that I've really, it's a free try, you know, try, try material. Um, and it's so useful. I really like it for just kind of a catch all tray. Ah, use a stronger key back and mount it to the ceiling. <laughs> I like that. Okay, I think we're gonna end it here. Um, it went a little bit longer than I had expected, which should be expected. Uh, again, the, the only things I plan on doing is I'll reprint the base out. I'm gonna check out the version with the drawers and depending on how much filament it is and what the model looks like, maybe go with that and then add some sticky feet to it. And then ideally find a way to mount it on this because that would be, that'd be sweet. Um, that would be really cool, so. <clears throat> I need about 1,000 more drippy buckets. Yeah, the drippy buckets are, it's just such a cool model. It's a fun model. Um, I really like it. So anyways, thank you guys for hanging out. Um, thank you for everyone that liked, that commented, that um, yeah, ch just chilled. Thank you for all of our new members, our returning members. Thank you for, I know it was XR and PF, I believe today, that were the two that had uh, gifted um, membership. So thank you both for the support and thank you to Polymaker as well as uh, Iconic Fab and KB3D for allowing us, providing the kit as well as allowing us to give one of these away. I'm looking forward with whichever kit next needs heat inserts to to use this. It's 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 fun like feeling the resistance of the key back as you push down and not having to worry about holding it straight like it's it's pretty freaking cool. I can actually, I'm thinking with this wire, I can probably, I can probably give myself a little bit less slack, but no, I think I'll leave it like that for now. So I will send uh, messages to the winners as soon as I get uh, a moment. And next week, next Wednesday, um, I don't know, we'll figure things out. We'll figure, I, we're gonna be opening the T300 and getting that set up. So it'll be like another print and chill. I just don't know timing yet, it depends on things but when i know i'll schedule it and the goal will be same time as today the goal will be same time as today so awesome all right everybody thanks again have a wonderful rest of your wednesdays if it's still wednesday wherever you're at and i will hopefully catch you guys next time cheers everyone bye